Welcome everybody to episode 118 of The China Show, formerly known as ADV Podcasts. We got a fun one for you today. Our favorite Chinese subculture, the Shamata, are back. We got some never before seen videos that we're going to show you. The reason they're back is actually because Shamata, mm -hmm. something we've covered quite in depth, was going around on mainstream internet and it was viral on TikTok, on YouTube. And I was like, I couldn't believe I was seeing it in the wild. Yeah. I like to take a little credit for that, you mm -hmm. know, both of us. Yep. Um, we'd like to give a bigger spotlight and tell more of their story. Correct. So yeah. we're going to give you a little bit more history, but show you these new clips. Before we do that, let's saunter into what's new. As usual, what's new with regards to China? We've got quite a, a few things to talk about here. First of all, a while ago, we showed you a completely different clip of these swabs being yeah. made. Remember? Yeah. Remember that one? China right now, it's insane, the amount of testing that is being done in China for COVID. I mean, just in Shanghai alone, you're talking about millions and millions of tests a day. Tens of millions of tests. You know the amount of waste that's happening. Oh it's my insane. Gosh. Can you imagine the oceans right now? I mean, every little test tube, because every single sample, first of all, it's in a plastic sleeve. You've got a swab. That gets tested. It gets put in a little test tube with solution. Then that gets sealed in its own bag. We're talking about huge amounts of plastic waste and all that. But that aside, the, the demand for these things are high, these yeah. little swabs. Because it's now part of everyday life in China. In some places, you have to get tested every day, some places every three days, whatever the case. If you want to travel, if you want to go to the supermarket, you need a test. Yeah. So you're getting tested. So the demand for these swabs are massive. So they're just being made, right? Any which way possible. Including, as you can see in this clip behind us, a newly, new clip that's just surfaced. Um, just kind of assembled by hand. Now, Without gloves. No gloves, no masks. I mean, the whole point of these things is you're testing, right, to mm -hmm. see if uh, you have COVID. What if one of these workers has COVID? Or just is contaminating the or swab with any culture. just dirty. Yeah. It's, it's a room full of people that have got no personal protection on them. No. Their hair, saliva, mm -hmm. or anything can get into these packets. Anything that was on their hands. Hold on. Can you go back for a second? Yeah, I'll go back because this next clip's hilarious. But um... yeah, you don't need to. Uh, yeah. I just want to point out something that we have personal experience with. Mm -hmm. When you think of China yeah. and you think of manufacturing in general, oftentimes you'll think of these massive factories. They have like uh, quality control, QC yeah, walking like around. Robots. And... Robots. Everyone's wearing hair nets and stuff. And you mm -hmm. do have that, especially in some of the silicon places. Oh, absolutely. Right? You do. Now, that being said, while you have factories like that that are making things for export, you also have a huge clandestine uh, workshops, like a, mm. a huge amount of clandestine workshops that are set up in these tiny, crappy little villages. And we can yeah. attest to that because we set up our shop next to a lot of these clandestine factories. What they yeah. do is they actually manufacture things like what you're seeing here. Yes. They might manufacture, uh, remember one is making calculators. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the boards for calculators yeah. in these greasy little shops with no windows, yes. dirt floors, some of them, and a uh, place that was making fake beer. Yeah, the fake beer fake one. Beer. Yeah, they would bring in, mm. they would go and buy all the used bottles from all the barbecue restaurants, yeah. and they would come and they would just basically clean them up, put a fake label on, you know, of Qingdao or whatever, and then put, put in their own homemade concoction that they were making there in that little building. Yeah. And then they would go sell it back to these, uh, you know, barbecue restaurants, restaurants at a massive discount. And we actually mm. drank fake beer a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, what they normally do is they'll bring you real ones in the beginning. And when people start to get a little bit tipsy or drunk, they'll start to bring in the fake ones. Yeah. Because you don't notice it that, that much. Yeah. All sorts of nonsense like this. Now, one might think that this is a little bizarre, okay, right. because we're dealing with medical stuff here. Surely there are quality mm. control checks and stuff. Well, I have a lot of insight into that, actually. Because what happens is in the hospitals, there's a big racket going on where doctors or like the leaders or the managers, so like head doctor of a clinic, for instance, will take a massive kickback in order to sell these counterfeit medicines mm -hmm. and counterfeit things like this, mm -hmm. right? So somebody will approach the head guy and be like, listen, you're getting a budget from your HR or whatever, from your finance department. You get a budget of, let's say, 100,000 RMB to buy these swabs. Well, how about we sell them to you for like 10,000 RMB yeah. and then we'll split the difference or yeah. whatever. So, you know, they, it's a big corruption thing. So these things do make it into circulation. And of oh, course, they do. it's very easy to get these, uh, these kind of very badly non-hygienic swabs 
into circulation and into the population. Yeah, and actually, this uh, swab thing without the you know the protection and go getting into circulation has actually been happening in Vietnam a lot as well, mm. and then filtering its way back into China because yeah. of the demand for testing. So yeah. it's getting it's it's so the market for these kind of like fake swabs and stuff and this testing stuff mm -hmm. is so large that it's even being exported in sure. nearby countries to satiate the demand within China because of how much testing they need to do. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And and again. This is just rife for, well, basically spreading the disease. Yeah. Because what if you, you, these are contaminated and then they go and test somebody who's not positive and yeah. cause them to become positive? It'd have positive. to be pretty soon after they package sure. it. But yeah, it's just bad practice in general. Absolutely. And, and I just wanted people to understand that this kind of really half-assed way of doing things is how a lot of products in China are made, especially stuff that you might get from Amazon where it's like, you know, kind of like third party off market, like off brand. Mm -hmm. It's like going down the like ladder. Like a cell so phone like, charger. Yeah, like a cell phone charger. It's not called like, it's not called like Pro Charge anymore, like a Chinese brand or something. It's called like XPQM7 yeah. Cool Touch. You know, <laughs> yeah, like it'll be something like something that. Something crazy. When you get yeah. down to that level, a lot of that's being made in these clandestine factories. Little factories, yeah. yeah. Anyway, now the next clip we're going to show you just shows you how ridiculous. Um, this whole top-down management system in China is. Yeah. That's the way the government works. This is the way everything works. Now, these testers are given quotas, obviously. Like, mm -hmm. you have to test a certain amount of people. Yeah. Okay? So how China's worked, by the way, since Mao, Mao came up with quotas and he yeah. stole them the idea from the Soviet Union. Of course, like and everything else. It still operates like that today. Yeah. I, I just really get tired of people thinking that China's reformed. Mm. It did experiment with capitalism, but it still works on the quota system. Sure. So here you can see, I'm going to play this clip. This is the testing woman, and what she's doing is she's just testing herself over and over and packaging them so, and then scanning it, you see, over and over and over again in order to meet her quota. So she obviously had to test, I don't know, like uh, people. Six, 600 people that day or whatever, and she didn't meet her sure. target. So she's just filling up the rest um, with her own tests, you know? Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. And well, this, I mean, <laughs> I mean th this is why you cannot trust the numbers coming yeah. out of China. When they like release a GDP number, yeah. when they release the amount of people that were infected by COVID, you can't believe any of it. Oh, this because, will go into official data. Yeah, everything is just kind of made up on site yeah. and just changed to meet whatever mm. requirements are there. Yeah, and that's why you found when. China was reporting such a low amount of infections in the beginning, which, of course, is impossible, especially mm. given the, the population density in China sure. and the fact that it broke out there in the first place in Wuhan and stuff. What they were doing was, in order to reach the right numbers, so the government's like, hey, you cannot have any infections or you may only have a few. Yeah. You have to have less infections than the USA. Mm. And they're like, okay, how much does the USA have? Okay, they've got like 10,000. Let's make ours about 30. And then what they do is everybody who's infected, instead of writing down COVID as the reason why they're sick, they'll be like, oh, uh, acute pneumonia or, yep. you know, like bad flu or whatever, just to change the numbers. And this is that kind of thing in action. Yeah. You can see it in action right here. I mean, if one got caught on camera, how many times do you think this is actually happening? Yeah. Because you see, each one of those bottles, by the way, has got a, a, a unique barcode on it for whoever's supposed to have been tested. And yeah. I guess they just didn't turn up or whatever the case. So she's like, well, I'm supposed to, I'm to responsible. Quota, yeah. I have to do this. So she's just testing herself and scanning for each different That's one. the thing is like, as much as you can get down on her for that kind of really bullshit attitude of doing this, it's because she's going to get in massive trouble if she doesn't hit that quota. Yeah. It'll be on her head. And that's, a, that's a, actually a great piece of... Um, kind of like evidence of how top-down leadership doesn't work, like you said. Yeah. Because when nobody wants to be held accountable and the next person's head is on the chopping block, no one will actually stand up and say, oh, well, actually, I didn't finish today. Or, yeah. oh, I didn't get it done, Yeah, right? That's how everything in the government works there. Now, this this next one's a bit of an own goal, I guess, as far as China's <laughs> an concerned. An own goal. I mean, okay, yeah. we have to explain. This is self own. A, this is a, what you're going to see behind us here is a, a police exercise. It's an anti-terrorism um, suppression exercise, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just show it to you and then we'll tell you why it's so ridiculous. Okay. So here's this guy walking around with a signboard. Okay. In, in a mall, in a shopping mall, the police come out with their riot shields and they're like, they're shuffling on. And they've, <laughs> they've got those like kindergarten stabber <laughs> neck grabber yeah. things that they, they all have outside the kindergartens. And they're just like, this is how we're going to take care of this, this guy who's being violent with his sign and trying to kick my shield. And they take him down and 
Remember, this is simulated YouTube. This is not real violence. Okay, right, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but now the curious thing is, this is their publicized, televised, um, you know, this is this, this is their drill. This is how we take care of, um, you know, terrorists. What does he have on his sign? Oh, he's it's a it's about the bank protests. It's about oh. protest. He's protesting. Well, he's he's basically yeah. protesting. He wants equal wages yes. or he wants higher wages. Yes. So, the terrorist uh, to the police and to the Chinese government is somebody who's just got a legitimate <laughs> gripe. That's, that's it. the terrorist. Not somebody with a knife. Not somebody who's like getting revenge on society. No, it's, it's some, a guy with a sign. Guy with a sign walking around saying like, equal "I wages. want equal wages. I want higher, like better wages or whatever." <laughs> and Chris G in the chat says, "Careful, he's got a verb." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. And how many freaking police and security guards and stuff do they need for one guy who's walking around with a sign saying like? Better wages now. <laughs> you right. know what I That's mean? That's the terrorist. Yeah. And he like kicks He's not even armed. Some... Yeah. He's not. So th this is obviously released just mm -hmm. before the whole bank protest yes. thing. Yeah. Because we saw this in action when the people went to go and protest the fact that all their life savings had been stolen. Okay. Yeah. Bye. I've actually seen, I saw something like this mm -hmm. last year and it might be the same clip. So it's been, I think it's been around a while. Yeah. 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 But it just shows you that it's true. Th yeah. These are the people yeah. that they are being they are training to stop, are people with legitimate gripes. In China, they have this thing called hersie, which means social harmony. Okay, and anyone who disrupts social harmony becomes an enemy of not only the the government but in the the society as a as a yeah. whole. Right. Yeah. And you can see this here. So this happened. This is bu hersie. Yeah, exactly. So you saw this happen. Um, by the way, we're going to talk about this tank thing in a minute because it's a bunch of baloney, but we'll get to that in a second. But you can see, because when they went to go and protest for their lost savings or stolen savings and investments, what happened? Mm -hmm. The police and mafia thugs turned up and they beat up the protesters and they dragged them away and they did all of this kind of stuff to the protesters. So that is who they really are training to attack on their Correct. own people with legitimate gripes. Yes, unarmed. <laughs> Yes, unarmed, with a sign saying, you know. <laughs> give me equal wages. Yeah, give me, give me, give, give me better wages, you know. Anyway, um, now we have to talk about this tank clip. Now, guys, yeah. there's a reason that neither of us posted this out there on social media. We had a lot of people sending it to us like, have you seen this? What is it? Like, this is the next thing. They're bringing in the tanks to, like, suppress the protesters uh, outside the banks. But immediately, both of us knew that wasn't true. So... Ironically, I want, I'd like to get into this. I think yeah. this is more important than actually what happened because most likely nothing happened here. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had tankies and like people go after me saying like, see, it turned out not to be true. I was the first person to say, this is not what you think it is. I didn't even respond to I didn't. I, I literally saw this pop up and I said, I need to wait for verification mm -hmm. because there are some things that... that Rub me the wrong way. Yeah, they were like they're bringing in the tanks to stop the Hunan pro the bank. That's protest. what that's what people were and saying. I said, but this isn't in Hunan. No, this is in Rujiao and Shandong. Yeah, right. We Plenty had Chinese people place. immediately verify that that's not where it is. Mm. Right. So I'm not going to commentate on that because it's not. How is something thousand a thou, over a thousand miles away going to be related? Right. Yeah. Maybe it is. Maybe. But I need confirmation for that. Yeah. Right. Number two. I had a bunch of people on our subreddit mm -hmm. and people sending me DMs being like, because I was telling people, we need to wait for verification. Sure. This does not look like what it, what people are saying. Yeah. It's like a, a game of telephone, yeah. right? It just, get, the rumor got out of control. Yeah, broken telephone. And I'm like, what What are you talking about? This is not even where you think it is. People are like, look at the Hunan bank protests are getting out of control. They're bringing in the tanks. Sure, I said, no, like, they're nope. not. This isn't in Hunan. And they're like, right. you're being uh, ridiculous. Don't be one of those people that calls people conspiracy theorists. And I said, but it's not correct. Yeah. It's wrong. Yeah. Right? So this is what happens when, when people just get out of control. It doesn't matter what side you're on here. Mm -hmm. There's no like, oh... Because we're against the Chinese government, then we're just going to believe every bullshit thing that comes out. Yeah. No, there's a reason we don't jump on a lot of this stuff. And there's a reason that people get mad and say, why haven't you covered this yet? Because sure. it's not real. Yeah, we have to be responsible when it comes to what we tell you guys and what we report on. So what do you speculate is going on with this whole tank thing anyway? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Here's the thing. A lot of... A lot of the, the pro-China uh, crowd, you know, Chinese nationalists are like, oh, they're just moving the tanks through yeah. there. 
Uh, here's the thing that I have against that, though, is that when you transport tanks, you transport them on the back of trucks. Yes. There's no reason to put them on the streets. They ruin they, the street. Yeah, they or, destroy yeah. the road. Right. And unless it's part of like a parade or something, there's no need for tanks to be driving around under their own power. No. You know, on the streets. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Now, to, I, I have not seen any evidence, and I think we would have heard something if this is to suppress something, though. That's the yeah. thing. It's there is I mean, there was no protest in Rizhou and Shandong. Look, there there could be a number of reasons. Yeah. Hey, oh, this is interesting. I didn't see that yet, but anyway, um, maybe, and I'm just going to put this out here. Maybe the Chinese government heard inklings that there would be something maybe. there, and they put them there as a deterrent. Maybe because they do do things like that. Yeah. Didn't Absolutely. I didn't say they didn't. Right. But I can't say at, that. For at sure. the end of the day, what we can say for sure is that this is not related to the Hunan no. uh, bank protests. But they could have been deployed in order to deter something similar. Maybe they have. Maybe they know that the local banks up there are going to have a problem, or there's sure. going to be something that might cause some kind of unrest. Maybe. So they put, I mean, that, that's that's as far as I'll take this. Yeah. It could be that, like a lot of people are saying, they're just transporting the tanks, but it doesn't make sense. Pro- probably not. Yeah, that doesn't make sense no. to transport tanks on by through you know by their own power through the streets. I don't take the tankies' perspective here because it makes no sense. Like you yeah. said, you're not going to destroy the streets, and I also don't take the other side that a bunch of people just got blown away by tanks because mm. we would have heard about it. And I spent a long time asking people about it. The only confirmation I got is where where it was. Yeah, and I don't know why. I don't well, even think the people on the ground knew why. Yeah, we're going to have to keep a close eye yeah. on this. And if there are any updates, we promise we'll tell you. But we're not going to just jump on things straight away i mean unless we know that they're true yeah i mean don't i don't know why people would want that to be true you know what i mean mm. i don't well, think look here's the thing we have seen like massive massive upheavals and yeah for the first time yeah. ever in china with this whole people not paying the the mortgages for their unfinished sure. buildings it's the first time anything like that's happened on on mass right and of course the chinese government right now is scrambling to try and fix Absolutely. it. Absolutely. They're trying to implement some kind of debt forgiveness things through the banks, force the banks to pay, you know, to to do that kind of thing. Sure. They're doing everything, censoring people, talking about the whole mortgage thing. They're doing everything they can because they know that this is a potential, um, you know, moment that could spark a sure. massive problem could. for them. In a very well could be. Yeah. In a very this well could be. be connected. Could be. But again, we don't know for sure. Yeah. So and we'll let you know if we if we figure it out. That's as far as we we can yeah. get with a tank thing, guys. We so. talk about things we we know for sure. Yeah. And when we find out any more information, we promise you we'll be come f- come here yeah. for the real stuff. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Who did this? Oh, uh, somebody on our subreddit <laughs> was the top post. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing I'm not familiar with is that is Boss Baby, where this is from. And it's weird. When I looked it up, it, it's massive. Yeah, I know. It was know, like a I, huge thing. I heard about it. I didn't watch it, but yeah. I heard about it. Yeah, it's, but it's not like Pixar or something. It's just one of those other 3D ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the thing, though. Like, you know, it's weird how getting old works because when you think about, like, dates and stuff, like sure. we were saying earlier, it's like if someone mentions, oh, like, back in the 70s, and in my mind, that's like maybe 30, 40 years ago, but it's not. Yeah. No. <laughs> 30 years ago was 1992 blow yeah. your mind guys yeah which is 1992 ridiculous. was 30 years ago yeah you know uh, and i remember 1992 yeah me too i was like watching ninja turtles yeah and you me know, too. that kind of thing it's exactly yeah it's 12 do. years old yeah. so wow anyway i was six Anyway, oh yeah, we've got a. We, before we continue, we're going to get into the Shamato thing. That's the main segment of the show guys yeah. um but before we do we have to tell you about our our monday show briefly uh, uh, no. Oh, no, we don't have to we tell have you. We have to tell you about a sponsor. Sorry. We have to tell you about our sponsor. And I threw a little thing together here. I hope you guys appreciate it. I think it's kind of cool. So let's just hit it, shall we? You love your computer. It does absolutely everything that you need it to do. It's snappy. It's fast. But over time, it gets slower and slower. In fact, How old is this thing? How do I even use it? Computer? Hello? Hello, computer? Luckily, there's something that can restore your computer back to its former glory, so you can get back to work. IOLO System Mechanic is an all-in-one PC cleanup. One click ensures peak performance by analyzing and repairing system issues. Quickly clear out temporary internet files, browser data, 
repairs registry issues and removes broken Windows shortcuts, remove bloatware that's slowing you down, as well as patch security issues in Windows and privacy concerns. You can also relax knowing that automatic maintenance is taking place in the background. This really is an all-inclusive PC performance and maintenance toolbox. Use the link in the description below and don't forget to use the code THE CHINA SHOW and you'll get 70% off System Mechanic. That's a huge discount and think about it. This is a great gift for your parents or someone who doesn't understand computers very well and you're tired of always fixing their computers for them. You know, set them up with this. It'll be a big hassle off your mind. So, you know, I actually... um use the that old vhs camcorder thing that you got me for christmas nice. uh, to film that glad you did i thought the aesthetic was fantastic <laughs> and don't forget to go to uh, the link down in the description and use the code the china show you get 70 percent off system mechanic and remember when you help our sponsors you're helping us too mm -hmm. because we don't get a whole lot of sponsors and if that company supports us that means they support a good message and it shows a, a little bit of a shift in the attitude towards china yes. these days it sure does um you know before we got people like Iolo to to support us, it was um, you know previously like last year it was impossible to get people. Impossible. They no just one. wouldn't. Nobody would touch us. You know we had agents. You know friends of, like subscribers and friends of the show who this is what they do for a living who reached out to us and like hey look we've tried to get all these different companies and they're interested when they see the numbers and all that but as soon as they find out that you do stuff that kind of might anger China they're like. Drop, chain. They just eh. just drop it. They just yeah, drop us. For sure. So, you know, something like this is software. Yeah. So China can't be like, we're not going to supply you with <laughs> yeah. your floppy disks or something. Otherwise, this software would do a lot of damage to a, a mainland Chinese computer with all the government malware on it. We, still have, it to do, we have to do something about that, yeah. the whole 360 yeah, and all that. Anyway, guys, anyway. time for us to move on to our main uh, subject here, which, of course, is a soft power hour, where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind through various ways. And... I don't know how I'm going to spin this one because this is about a subculture in China, in China right? Well, I mean, this, here's the deal. I think it does match perfectly into soft power. Okay. And the reason being is that soft power is a product of culture, right? So if you yeah. have a culture that is very palatable and then spreads across to another country, that is soft power, right? So yes. America's soft power would be Hollywood. Yeah. Everyone, everyone in the whole world, I don't care who you are, knows Hollywood movies. That's right. There's yeah. not one country in the world that doesn't at least know what Hollywood is, right? Sure. That's an example of soft power. Now, when you have a pop culture that is popular in a country that doesn't spread, now that's not soft power. And sure. that's what we're going to talk about here. But we're going to make soft power today by bringing Shamata back up, which is a subculture in China that is hated by Chinese people. Yeah. Number two, the most important part, is it did make a little soft power. Yes. Because Shamata made it to the American mainstream internet, yeah, which is crazy. Let's be honest. We love these guys. So we we're going to show you a little recap and maybe a little bit of new footage you haven't seen here. So let's just play it for you. We'll leave ourselves in the corner here. Let's do this it. is just a screenshot of, uh, you know, of, of it going around, making the rounds. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was currently trending. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's our man. Oh, yeah. He's the leader. He's the leader. The that guy's face. That warped in many directions. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay, what's he saying? I'm the... Well, first, first well, of all, can okay. we go back to that clip right before, just so we can recap? Because there's going to be some people in here that are not familiar. Sure. Shamata is a very interesting subculture in China where people are from a certain area, a rural area of China, will move to a city, a main city, and then become a factory worker. Yeah. They're torn away from their families and all their friends and stuff, so they have to find a new identity, and that's how this kind of came about. Yeah. They listen, these are the identifying features. They listen to really awful Chinese electronica music. Yes. Happy hardcore type it's stuff. Awful. What you're hearing, really. Yeah. Um, and number two, they'll have... Uh, very, very gaudy looking clothes that are kind of like what you'd see a hairdresser in yeah, China. Yeah, Chinese wear. hairdressers yeah. kind of wear this. this a lot of overlap. Thing. Yeah. Hairdresser culture in China and Shamatu mm -hmm. culture. Overlap. They're, they're almost the same. They're almost the same. Mm -hmm. And number three, very crazy hair. Yes. Uh, puffed up hair. You can have puffed up hair. Yeah. You can have spiky hair. You can have lots of different rainbow colored hair. Uh, this guy has this very interesting Lego piece that goes on his <laughs> yeah. head type yeah, hair. Yeah. Um, and. 
oftentimes they'll they'll also whiten their face. Yes, I mean, whiten their face only, and use a lot reason. of filters. A lot of face filters. It's kind of crazy. It it's a big mixture of Japanese host culture yeah. that where it came from, and a bit of punk culture yeah. thrown in there, and just every bit of random stuff from Korea. And it's been made into its own kind of, it's kind of like low class chic. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is it's very different from the things that you just mentioned. It's It does borrow mm. elements from that, but it's yeah. different societally. Yes. Chinese people hate Shamato culture. Yeah. It's, it's they seen, hate migrant workers to I mean, begin yeah, with. Yeah, it's seen as incredibly low class. Yeah. That's it. You know what yeah. I could compare it to? Yeah. Even though it has nothing to do with it, I think status wise, it's very similar to Juggalos. Okay. Think about juggalos, yeah. mm -hmm. lost people, mm -hmm. don't have an identity, have this whole family element, they come together, yeah. right? They have their festival, they have their dance, they do all their stuff, right? Yeah. And they're kind of seen as outcasts, mm. exactly like Shamata. Yeah. From a different place, they come together, they make a new family. There's yeah. factory workers, usually lower, lower income, right? right? And they make their new culture. They come together and they, they form an identity and I, really just seen as like very low class people sure. from the outside world or from, from China, from the Chinese society. So it's fun to give them uh, a spotlight. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because when I, and I, I've told this story before, but when I first came to China, yep. I was there right during Chinese New Year, right? Yep. Chinese New Year is when there's no Chinese people in any of these big cities. Mm. Uh, Shenzhen, just like in the city I lived in, Huizhou, is also a migrant city. Yeah. Everyone Completely there empty. isn't local. Almost yeah. everyone. They go there to work in the TCL factories, the yeah. Sony factory, the Samsung factory is Tencent, in Huizhou. Tencent. Yeah. All those places are right there. Yeah. So all, all these people come from Hunan, from Sichuan, from all of these outlying provinces. Right. And they'll go and work there. But during Chinese New Year, everyone leaves, right? It's this massive migration, billions, billions yes. of <laughs> train tickets and train passengers. Yes. It's insane. It's insane. Um, yeah, and everyone, there's this huge rush and it's it's always a big drama because in China, the public holidays, you don't get to take a holiday. No. Like you don't get to schedule a holiday with your company and say, I'd like to take two weeks off in June or something. No, you can only take time off when it's the state holidays. Right. So you have this window of a couple of weeks where everybody gets off at the same time and everybody has to get back to their hometowns. Right. It's ridiculous. There's like people hoarding tickets and selling them as scalpers. There's people doing sure. all sorts of weird stuff, but it's this massive rush to get home during that time. So it's right. always empty. Yeah. I So I wanted to say during mm. this time period where there's no one there, yeah. there were groups of shamata left over. Yeah. And they're obviously so ostracized either from home or they couldn't afford probably tickets couldn't back. afford to get back yeah, because yeah. that's a thing right yeah yeah prices go skyrocketing yeah um they they were or they were too far away they yeah. could have been from like rural yunnan or something yeah. it would have taken them weeks to get back sure right if they took slow travel yeah so i was at this club of course fake beer everywhere mm -hmm. And they took me in. I didn't speak a lick of Chinese. I'd been there a week. None of my coworkers were there because they went to Thailand or wherever. Yeah, yeah. I was the only guy in this freaking city with these shamata in this crap club. Yeah. Had a pulsating dance floor. Right. Terrible Chinese techno music in the background. Fake beer going around. And these shamata brought me in. They they gave me some beers and stuff. They obviously didn't have very much. Yeah. And pushed me on the dance floor. And I remember the beat dropped yeah. at one of these points. And they pushed one of their girl, you know, one of the girls onto the stage to dance with me or whatever. Yep. <laughs> and I, when the beat dropped, I threw her in the air. Like it was, everyone was wasted. Yeah, right? yeah It's yeah. like a crazy party. I threw her in the air and then put her back down. And, and she actually kissed me on stage and the whole club went <laughs> ape. Like everyone was cheering. That's freaking hilarious. out. People had these fake lightsabers. They were going crazy. Yeah. And I now thinking back, I didn't know at the time. Now thinking back, she was a shamata. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. it was, they were like the first people to kind of include me. There's so, certain yeah. areas that the shamata hang out in. So, for instance, in Shenzhen, it was Dongmen, which is yes. just like trend, That's a shamata tr area. trendy shopping area yeah. for young people. And they're always hanging out in those type of areas. So I bumped into them quite a lot there. Um, I, I've got clips and stuff of it. It's kind yeah. of funny. They're good. They're good, fun people. Yeah. You know? Oh, Very, they're great. Yeah. It's so, because they see you as an outsider as yeah. well. And they're outsiders. Sure. Right. Anyway, let's get into some of these new clips of the Shamata. So um, here we've got this one that's been going around. Not this, obviously. We'll get past this again quickly. Keep an eye on his face. Whoop, there we go. <laughs> these face filters are ridiculous. These people look nothing like this. Oh, no. We love a shamata, but I'll tell you what, they are, mm -hmm. they have some of the poorest taste in the whole world, really. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so here's the leader of this Wo particular shama. shama He's like yeah. saying, I'm the most handsome person on the internet. Yes. So he said that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> it's it somehow doesn't work as well don't, in English. Don't, to, don't call me a toilet lid. <laughs> don't call me a toilet lid. Because <laughs> it rhymes. It rhymes, yes. Yeah. So don't call me a toilet <laughs> lid. Yeah. I love that. It's though. hilarious. Because obviously people are calling him like toilet lid and stuff. I guess look so at his great. hair. It's his hair. <laughs> That's yeah. what? Like, don't I call me. Yeah. Connection. Yeah. Don't call me a toilet lid. <laughs> it really yeah. is a toilet lid, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's, it totally I'm is. I'm the handsomest guy. On the internet. Don't call, call me a toilet, toilet lid. lid. He said, "Don't call me a fingernail." Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a like fingernail. A <laughs> it's just like a thumb. Don't call me a a pang tao yu. So a, a fat carp, fat head carp, fat yeah. head fish is a carp. Don't call yeah, me a carp. Yeah. <laughs> a big head carp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big head fish. So yeah, that's that's like a. It's a type of carp. Yeah, yeah. yeah so don't call me a carp. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me a carp. Yeah, don't call me a carp. Yeah, I think that may be one of the most offensive animals you could call someone. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're you could a, call someone a rat or something. Yeah, yeah. A you look carp? like a carp. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, they're pretty ugly. Yeah, hideous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like don't call me. It's normally uh, like don't. He finished. Yeah, yeah. cut it off. But yeah, that's fantastic. I had never heard him talk, so I did yeah. a deep. I did a deep dive here. Yeah. And now you're seeing some fresh stuff because yeah. we've seen him and his crew. And again, Shama to they can look like this. this is the more of the hairdresser type, or yeah. you get more of the punk type. Yeah. We're, we're gonna look at both. Yeah. Um, and again, I just want you guys to remember: very, you know, far away from their hometown in a big city, making very poor wages. I mean, we're talking. Some of these factory workers are making two thousand RMB a month. So a couple, oh, less than couple, that. A couple hundred bucks, right? Yeah. And they're sitting there sending all their money back home to their poor sick mom or whatever, yeah, yeah. their grandma or whatever. Yeah, we'll get into that a little yeah. later because we've got a lot of footage sure. to show you. But uh, this this is a recap. We showed this to you before. Yeah, sure. Just to get a little... You see the duality? Yeah. You got the punk types yep. and you got the, the hairdresser, hairdresser types. types. Yeah. Very important to understand mm -hmm. those. But they get a lot... They're in the same group. Yeah. This music. You so see the white face? Yep. Also notice these are the same people with the very sharp chins, but now the filter's not working. Yeah. They do this thing where they smell their finger and then they do a heart. Yeah. They go like... Yep. Like this. Yep. They always have to smell their finger. I still don't know what that's about. No, but it's gross. It's, it is. There's some shamata girls. Mm -hmm. Here's some of the punk, punk shamatas. Yep. Oh, here he oh, goes. Yeah. He's the leader. Yeah. Oh, he's like, oh, I'm just messing around. Oh. But he actually got married. <laughs> he did. This he had is a kid. an update. He had a kid. Yes, he had a kid. He's got his fake Pikachu. Look at the Pikachu's nose. Yeah, it's a fake Pikachu. It's got like a man's nose. Do you think the face filter's working <laughs> on the Pikachu, maybe? Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe it is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, and he got some fake Peppa Pigs there. Yeah. Check it out with his wife. Look at them together. Aren't oh, they yeah. great? Oh, yeah. Look at that toilet. That's, toilet by the way, there. like a marriage clothing. Yes. Just yeah. got the shuang shi we, on it. We do want to say shout out to uh, the most handsome man on the internet. <laughs> yeah, Shamata number one. You, yeah. you, you don't look like a carp. Oh, he's definitely a friend of the channel. If he yeah. knew about us, he would love us. We, we're giving him lots of exposure. Oh, he's a great guy. And he seems <laughs> like a real fun dude. Yeah, I won't jow you. Like, uh, I won't call him a toilet yeah, lid. I won't call you a toilet lid. Or a carp. Lid. Or jubajie. Or jubajie. He said yeah, that in yeah, the yeah. So just some quick updates of our, our duo. Yeah. That's They're their marriage fun. outfits. Yeah. Looking great. See the white face, how it stops at the neck? Yeah. See that? Yep. That's a very common thing in China in general. See, so they had the shuang shi on the hands. So yeah. Each had a shi. You can teach that. You're yeah, good at well, characters. Shuang shi means double shi, double happiness, really. In fact, there's a cigarette brand called Double Happiness. But this is always uh, when you have a wedding, they use this character because it symbolizes, of course, you know, a marriage and pe two people being happy together. Yeah. So it's always, you'll always see that on the wall at a wedding. It'll sure. be on wedding cakes. It'll be like, it's on his actual clothing there. And yeah. they wrote, they each wrote a uh, she on their hands. So next to each other, it's a shuang shi. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats to them. Yeah. They look happy. And they had a baby. Yeah. Which we showed last time. 
Oh, this is a classic. Oh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, punch, punch. Oh, didn't don't, expect no, that, did totally you? No, no You know way. what's great about that is we always saw her expecting yeah. her to be another Shamato, but it's actually his wife. Yeah, I'm sure she's Shamato, too. Oh, no, she is. I'm saying expecting her to be one of the cohorts. Now, this, by the way, is a classic clip. Oh, classic. This is where Shamato comes from. Yes. Okay, now this is them in their native habitat. Yes. Before they make it to the big cities, in the rural areas of China, in the woods, you know, this or is where... Field. Yeah, this is yeah, or field as you'll see. This is where the shamato begin. Yes. So if they are in David Attenborough. This is like see, and it's rare to see them in their native habitat because yeah. that footage doesn't get out. Yeah, this is their natural habitat. Yeah. So what happens is, they all gather together in these little groups in the woods. Okay. Yeah. Where nobody can watch them, and this is what they do. I'll get us out of here Wait, so you can see. You'll it see this clearly. in Hunan and in Sichuan. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a look. Cigarette in hand, too. Oh yeah, I love this guy in the white. Oh, he's he is just absolutely destroying the other guy. Oh yeah, he's the just... other guy's body language like shut down, but he tries to come back and save oh, yeah. face. Yeah, we could do a blow by blow here. So like. Oh, like, white oh, guy's back, hands, hands in pockets. Like, I, that looks reeks of insecurity to me, but I think he commands the most respect in the group, so he can't lose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that guy. Did you, did see, you see it? I got to bring yeah, him back. Please do. It was like a false start. Like, it was, okay. Yeah, he wasn't ready to keep it no. out yet. No, like you see this guy comes in on the right in, in a black jacket. You'll see him coming in a suit jacket. Yeah, Here he comes. These guys weren't done. Here he comes. He's like, my turn. Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't oh, think uh, so, buddy. Yeah. Get back, hairdresser. Get, get out. It's his turn now. Look at him go. Oh, sway in the hips. I, I mean, this guy is just, he's toying with new ideas. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, can you pause it there? It's very important for you guys to understand. There was yeah. a vehicle there. Oh, yes. And the Shamata vehicle in the wild there mm -hmm. is going to be a rundown copy of a Honda CG125 motorcycle. That's correct. And it's going to have a, a, we call it a crayon exhaust because it kind of looks like a crayon. Oh, yes. It's yes. a loud, horrid exhaust yes. on a single cylinder thumper motorcycle. And it's horrible. But when you bring them to the city and you can't ride motorcycles anymore, they're going to be on those really knockoff bad e-bikes. Yes, that's right? right. Yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, they also have those freeway 125 knockoff scooters. They like scooters. those knockoff scooters, mm. yeah. And they always have lights and stuff on them. You yes, know? yes. Dude. Oh, an underglow, a yeah. fake underglow, and then like LEDs. Yeah, everywhere. Sometimes you'll get guys that'll put in speakers. In yeah, 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 they Incredible. do. Incredible. It's, it's fun. Blasting this music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the litter on the ground, too. It's key. Yeah, that's part it's of the vibe. Throw the trash on the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. It is part of the vibe. Without yeah. it, it would be weird. Yeah. And you just see him. He's really going for it here. Um, but he does look like he's a little bit embarrassed. Right. Um, go back to that real quick. I yeah. just want to show, like, this is so rare to see Shamata in at home. Yeah. Right? Because this is not in the city anymore. No. Where do they go in the city? Well, they hang out, like I said, in all the shopping districts, like the, but the when pedestrian dancing, streets. I'm saying. Yeah, the pedestrian yeah, streets yeah. in the squares. Yeah. You'll see them kind of counter counterbalancing the eyes. Yeah, they're the like, square dancing. yeah, the, the aunties that do their yeah. dis, dis, disturbing dancing stuff that they do. For sure. You know that that whole IE dancing, Guangchang Wu thing is also like a big hookup culture with the old people? Yeah, it is. They're Dude, cheating on their wives I remember and like, um, it was, it was, I don't know. Was it? It wasn't my Chinese family. Was, I went somewhere, and I remember I was at. Um, I was with my ex-wife, so we went to the hometown. We're hanging out there, and they were all. Uh, yeah, they were yeah. all complaining about the one uncle that keeps going and cheating on his wife with the eyes. Banging and, the yeah, eyes. Yeah, he's because <laughs> they go into the park and they do this dodgy stuff. They go do this dancing, yeah. and that's how they hook up and they yeah. meet other elderly singles like yeah. or like not singles because they're, they're just cheating. elderly people and they mess around in the parks it's kind of gross it's <laughs> bad gross and I, I can attest i've seen it actually yeah. i've seen it oh it's, it's awful it's really gross anyway um what do we got going on here again oh uh, just yeah you see the guys dance fighting it's great um you see the leg the leg guards on that motorcycle yes, very key yes, as well yeah. Yeah, absolutely it's a it's a whole vibe yeah Great gathering of shamato though. Yeah. Really, really good to see. I love that. See that guy's got like those green pants. Oh, he's, he's lit up, isn't he? He's... Green green pants and like a neon I love it. Uh, uh, green yellow top. Yeah. Yeah. You always see the shamato when they ride around and stuff have like pas pastel blue they skinny love pants. The skinny pastel yeah. blue pants. Yeah, or some colors like that. And yeah. like uh, like uh, almost like a fake dress shoe. 
Yes. To yes. go along with Absolutely. it. In a jacket that doesn't fit properly. It's got to be super so tight. tight. Super tight. I mean, they're skinny in general. Yeah, yeah. Level, but, yeah. but it's like, yeah. even for that. I love these guys. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying He's it saying again. It. Don't, don't call me a, a toilet girl. seat. Don't call me a toilet seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it was a thing going around. People calling him a toilet seat. Yeah, so it's just like reaction videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have Chao Hua Chiu Yeah. yeah. Chiu yeah. yeah. uh, you can explain that. You're better well, at traditional you know, stuff. You know, there's the, the journey to the West. Mm. A lot of you might not know this, but you know, um, there's quite a lot, well, a lot of the Buddhist traditions and things that you find in China. We don't find them anymore because they were wiped out by Mao Zedong, but you'll still find in Cantonese culture and mm. stuff, uh, in Hong Kong and so on, and in Taiwan. But that all came from India. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so there's a very famous chronicle, I suppose you could call it a story, a legend of the monkey king and a priest and um, Jubajia, which is this pig dude. You might have seen him before. And their whole thing is they, it's a journey to the West to go and find some Buddhist scrolls. Yeah. Okay. So they're basically in China and they're going to, to India to get some teachings or whatever. And they have all these marvelous adventures along the way where like, fairies try to trick them and you know it's all that kind of kind of there's a whole cartoon about it this it's probably the only legend in china you know that survived that survived like that's culture, yeah. that's in pop culture so you'll see it a lot but juba jez basically was this kind of playboy guy who used to you know play around and so as punishment the gods turned him into a pig um, and then he had to accompany the Monkey King and this priest, whatever his name is, I can't remember now, to go and get the scrolls. Yeah. So he's like a human pig, like an anthropomorphized pig. He like walks around, he's got a massive belly and a snout, and he has a, you know, like a big staff or whatever to hit things with. But that's why he's like, don't call me Jubajie. So don't call me this like big fat human pig, basically. Yeah, Jubajie is actually a pretty common insult in China. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to see the hair in the back. Yeah, we can actually see the back of his hair. That's interesting. I'll yeah. some more, you know, nice little more. That oh, yeah. the filter. Just to show the juxtaposition, really. You can see their faces change as well. I love the, the bad quality Chinese phones here. Just don't, they can't do the filters properly. Yeah. <laughs> he said, don't call me a <laughs> I'm the internet's second, second most handsome answer. person. Yeah. Oh, guy or whatever. Oh, don't call me a toilet seat, but he <laughs> yeah. laughed. Can I go back? <laughs> yeah, he like, laughed at that. Get the, no. get the They're just face, capitalizing yeah. on this, this right now. It's it. hilarious. It's pretty clever. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a good phrase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He screwed up. <laughs> what, what <laughs> some different this? different ones in the wild. Now yeah. this is more of a modern look. Yeah. So what I've noticed in the yeah. shift is that we went from punk to hairdresser ish, mm -hmm. and it's more shifting towards a K-pop sort of look, but very discount, right? Yeah. So you get like they're trying to do like little face tattoos here and there. Right. They're trying to do like that kind of stuff, but it's still shamata. Right. Yeah, just showing the morph, you know. The overuse of filters to like a very unnatural extent. It's a very key character. Oh yeah, they they do it on purpose. Classic. Oh yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a good example of like a crazy shamata hairstyle. Yes. Now we found some more shamata yes, in the wild. Please introduce us, dude. This these is, are great. These are great. Uh, these these are the the mud, the the dust the mud shamata. I just want to say one thing before you introduce them. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is another very, very rare example of what you'd see normally in, in the Chinese countryside, but yeah. footage that leaked out of there because you'll see them in the big cities. This is them in their natural habitat, which yeah. I love. I absolutely love. I mean, you just, you have to understand that everybody gets to that age in their life, their, their early teens to mid-teens where you're rebellious and yes. you want to you know, exp express yourself. Sort of kick some dirt and around. You just, just want to be like cool and you know yeah. all that. But what do you get to do in the Chinese countryside? Because you get to kick dirt. literally we've been in the Chinese countryside. Yeah. There is nothing out there. No, There's no. nothing. Like it's awful. It's really sad. Actually. It's like some farm animals and some rice paddies and a little bit of, you know, a river, maybe some yes. dirt. So for like a young rebellious teen, this is really the, your only outlet, your only way to be cool and to meet up with other people. This is your stuff. Chinese yeah. juggalo out there in the countryside. Yeah, so let's take a look at what's going on here because it's... Uh, oh, it's, these are great. It's special. I love these You guys. ready? Let's hit it. No one's seen that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. The dirt. I love that it's not just in one video too. It's their key trademark. Yeah. American. Yeah, for sure. This is in there. This is in like a deep, like no view China compilation that okay. I downloaded. Okay, all right. Let's see. I thought that was good. yeah. Look at these guys. Oh yes, they're back on that same bridge, and now they're in the rice paddies. These. This is a vibe. Oh yeah. These guys are a vibe. Oh, that hair flicking thing. Oh, that's yeah? a female shamata trait. Right. Hey, cheers. Yeah. Yes. Boy. <laughs> yes. Slide underneath his legs and kick the dust. These awesome. guys are awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're talented at what they do. Sure. They practice. That whole dust whirlwind thing he's doing. I love it. And they oh, do it with water. It's in the mud. mud. Yeah, it's, now it's mud dancing. These guys are awesome. Yeah. I want to know these guys. Sure. They, you know they have a good time. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. if they're having that much fun out in the Chinese countryside, like you said, it's yeah. just so hard to have a good time out there. It's so oppressive and there's so much corruption. Like yeah. so much bad stuff happens. Sure. To have a good time is tough, you know. Yeah, why not have a good time by kicking up a dust storm? Why not? Yeah. With cool music. Sure. You know, like speaking of music, you might be wondering how do they play their music? Well, yeah. Oh, that's a good good point. Here's the thing. Uh when I was uh living in Shenzhen, I, early early days, early 2000s, so we're talking 2007, well, it's early to the mid 2000s, so 2007 or yeah, so right thereabouts. Sure. Okay. Um I met this girl and she and her family had a little shop in Huajian Bay, which is like the, the electronics, they call it the Silicon Valley of China. <laughs> you know, just like Hainan it's, is the Hawaii of China. <laughs> so it, just, a cheap electronics depot of China. It's, it's where everything's kind of, all those cheap, tatty yeah. kind of things are made, right? Yes. Or sold anyway. Okay. And her family used to specialize in these phones, okay? Like phones that had like a TV built in or, you know, yeah. like kind of weird phones. But one thing that was massively popular were these phones that could play incredibly loud music. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it was a key yeah, feature. Yeah. It looks like an, kind of like a normal phone, not a smartphone. You know, it's got all no, the no, dial, no, 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 no. dial pad and everything on it, but for, it's got some kind of speakers built in and it had LED lights that flash, but when you play it, it can go incredibly loud. But bad. It sounds atrocious yeah it's like the tiniest it's trap. like only treble yes okay it's, oh it's treble max yeah it's treble 12 with distortion. <laughs> with distortion it's awful but it's yeah yes. it's like you can it's vibrating the plastic yes shell. It, it really is so you can actually take that phone and it's like a boom box yeah. but it's better it's so loud that it's you could so hear loud. it if if we used it here, like people could hear it in the woods yes, over there. Yes, okay, yes, like yes, they yes. could be over the mountain. And <laughs> yes, they okay. could be over that mountain. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's what she used to sell. That's normally how they play their music. Yeah, you know, they've got these little cell phones or these little Bluetooth speakers or whatever, and they've just blasted. Now this, he's wearing his wedding clothes again now. But he got his buddies in on it. Yeah, but what are they doing? Let's look. It's an interesting. It's an interesting take. You got the whole carrot vibe. That guy ate it. Yeah. This guy fake. He fake bit it. Yeah. He's gonna take the chunk. Smell and smell and carrot by and heart. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So I, I mean, I guess they're just trying to add stuff to their ridiculous repertoire here. Yes. So Might you know, as well. they do the smell, the finger. They do the heart. Yeah. That's that's the Korean heart. Yeah, the thing. Korean heart, which Shama to have co-opted. They, yeah, exactly. But now they bite a carrot and spit it out first. Might as well. Yeah, sure. Now this waste is of va waste of vegetables. It's a waste of vegetables. They'll probably eat it. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, they'll pick it up the floor. <laughs> no, when they're doing the their dirt dance, and they'll be, you know, like it'll be part of that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get down in the dirt, guys. Those guys are awesome. No, they're cool. They're creating straight up tornadoes with, yeah. by walking in circles. Yeah. Dude, let's see you do that. <laughs> it's not a walk. That dude's doing a leg sweep. Yeah, it's like I can't do through. that. Yeah, I can't it's awesome. do that shit. You know what they? Oh, you know what I should have thrown in here? What? You know what they love doing is freaking wheelies on on crappy on motorcycles. Scooters. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. filmed them. Yeah. They're pretty good at that, they too. They are. They're yeah. good at, like, uh, physical stuff. Sure. Um, by the way, mm -hmm. now that we've shown you very... I mean, you're not going to see this anywhere, by the way. All that stuff we just showed you, you're not going to find anywhere because 
the Shamata don't usually film themselves in their hometown. In their natural habitat. Right, so that's rare footage. Now what you will see is this. This is Shamata from in, the countryside in the, in the city. And this yeah. is a good example of them. Yes, let's get us out of there. Look at that. What a vibe. My daughter has a scooter like that. <laughs> so She's like two and a half. Yeah. I love it. Look at this. And this is more modern. Yeah. You see how the aesthetic has changed a little bit? It's still Shama too. Yeah. It's this, just, it's, it's... This is like circa 2012, I'm, I'm thinking. Sure. It's it's evolved though. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm gonna say this is like 2016. Okay. But anyway, so there's some Shamato girls, you got the Shamato boys, and what they're doing is going to like a shopping district, like you said. Yeah. Right. And they're just kind of doing their thing. But it's it's key. I wanted to show, I wanted to include these guys because you see all the people in the background are kind of like off put by it. Yeah. They're like, ah, oh, these freaking Shamato again. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because they, I mean, their dancing doesn't look good. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they look outlandish. You know. Yeah. Doing a little Michael Jackson there. He's going around in a circle. But I want to show this. This is how the public treats them. Is that, okay, these people are gathered around kind of laughing at them or whatever. Oh, look, the, look at the Balan is chasing them away. Yeah. So, like, I mean, get like. Get out of here. Th this is what happens in China, though. Because this has happened to me. A crowd will gather for absolutely no reason in yeah. China. Yeah, yeah. If anything at all is happening that's even <laughs> yes. slightly, mildly different, yes. not even interesting, just different right. to the everyday norm that people are used to seeing, a crowd will suddenly gather. Yes. And this is something that the, the Communist Party hates. They're so afraid of crowds. Yes. Okay? Yes. So whenever there's a crowd of people, it gets dispersed as soon as, soon as humanly possible, usually by, yes. the ba by this guy's a security guard. He's, called a Baoan. Yeah, Baoan. He's got a police badge. Look, he's actually got a police Stuff, oh, but, he does, yeah. But the Bowans usually have that, too. Because yeah. they're like a very low-level kind of In a way. security guard slash. Yeah. They have a little bit of connection to the police, I guess. A little, yeah. But uh, they get rid of this. So these guys are just doing their stupid dances, which were really lame. But then... It, the but there's crowd, no reason to get rid of them. No, but yeah, but the crowd. That's yeah, the reason. that's the reason. So there's a crowd, a crowd. Yeah, and so suddenly the security guard's like, get out of here. Right. Yeah. So they, they make quite the exit, which I love. Yeah. They like peaced out. So yeah. while we talk about this in the background, this is just a little thing I found online. It's just kind of, you can see some footage in the background as we talk. See, 2012, they said this this particular one is from This particular one, yeah, for sure. I feel like that was peak, peak Shamata. Peak Shamata culture. And the thing is, it has this, dwindled. But this kind, yeah. you know? Now what we're seeing coming out with the uh, ramen Lego hair dude, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are we going to call him? Let's call him, I don't know. I don't want to call him Toilet Seat Carp. <laughs> I kind of, kind of do. No, we love yeah, him. No. no, he's great. Well, to Toilet Lid. Okay? You know what I will say about Shamato is they're usually not nationalistic. No. They're not They're not self-hating or anything, no, no, but they no. don't care about stuff like that. Yeah. Because they're outcasts, right? Yeah. This is kind of an interesting interview we found with like ex Shamato. So he's talking about growing up in poverty. Yeah. And, uh, you know. That this was their outlet for them, which is really cool. Yeah, I thought this is good footage to show as we kind of talk about that. So these yeah. people will grow up, and again, I don't like, I don't want to point out such the always the bad parts about China, but the poverty in rural China is still horrific. It's awful, and you you do everything you can to get away from that. Yeah. So if you think about this. A city, I don't know how to portray this dynamic properly because you have to understand the locals in a city will be so wealthy in comparison to anyone from the countryside. Yeah. So if you go to like even some crap city I used to live in up in Inner Mongolia, the people would talk about, oh, those are local people from the city. That's yeah. like really wealth. Ben, Bendiren, why, uh, why Wai Diren. That's Bendiren, what you get. Yeah. Like this whole Bendiren means a local and then a, like an outsider. Why Diren is yeah. somebody that's from a different place. Because don't forget that you have these residence permits, these hukos in China. And a lot of the people that go to the cities like these guys, they don't, it's not legal. No, no, They're, they can't go there. Yeah, you're not supposed to be there, basically. So you you are an outsider. You don't sure. have a local residence permit. Yeah. So you, you're just doing some hand-to-mouth work. You're getting paid almost nothing. Yeah. And I wanted to explain, because I met uh, I met factory workers, okay? Especially when I lived out in Buji. Remember mm. I had that place in Buji and I hang out with factory workers. They get paid almost nothing. Yeah. Okay, like 800 RMB a month. Some, some of them, 600 yeah. RMB a month. Some are much higher. Which, which is about $100. Yeah. No, the reason is, you hear me out, the reason they get paid so little is because the company will give them everything else. So they give them a dormitory to sleep in. They give them food. 
which right. is low end. It's super low Slop. end. But it's their excuse for not paying them more. It's also, can I throw on something? Mm-hmm is exploiting workers yes. because they don't have a hookah. Exactly, because they can sh- kind of smuggle them in there. They don't need a residence permit now to rent because you can't rent a place without a residence permit. No. So okay. they're holding them hostage yeah. in a way. So they allow them to come in and stay in the dormitories, pay them peanuts, like almost nothing, but they get their accommodation and food. So they can save like 90% of their paycheck every month yeah. because the only thing they spend money on is like stupid little tat, like their hairstyles and whatever yeah. else. Everything else- well, Actually, they... not even that because they'll know someone like Shama yeah. to graduate to become hairstylist. Yeah. yeah. So they'll go see their friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So close the ecosystem. <laughs> but the majority of their money gets saved or sent home to their poor, impoverished family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Correct. Which is uh, kind of the, the lifestyle that you're looking at there. Yeah, as much as you can clown on it, this yeah. more serious aspect is that they're coming from places. And again, you just talked about the people that managed to make it out and then are making 100, 200 bucks a month, right? Yeah. Of course, there's more success stories than that. If they yeah. can get a hookah, they'll make more money. But sure. the it wouldn't be a factory dis- work if you had a hookah, though. No, that's, that's true. That's know? true. But there are factories that pay better and have better yeah. circumstances. Sure. But on the low end of things, these kind of economic hostages, in a way, they're coming from places where people will take everything you have. The horror stories I heard from my friends that come from the countryside is yeah. like their neighbors rob them because they run out of food and money and stuff. Yeah. Then the local party officials are like basically robs the village blind and sends all the yeah. money elsewhere to their their house abroad or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so bad in some of these areas. You just want to do everything you can to escape. So you see how they fall into this kind of interesting subculture because when they leave those areas, yeah. they go to these areas and the Ben D. Ren local yeah. versus Y. D. Ren culture, outside yes. people culture, is so toxic in China yeah. that these city people, a lot of the city people will look at migrant workers like they're actually subhuman yeah, and well, they treat them as subhuman. You see how they kick them out of Beijing and stuff and yeah. demolish the, the hostels that they try yeah. to stay in and all this kind of stuff. It's pretty rough. It's bad, right? So yeah. they're treated so poorly by their own people of their own country. Yeah. And then so they, they, they find camaraderie in each other. And I've told this yeah. last time, but there was a radio station I used to listen to when I was learning Chinese. Yeah. And it was kind of like uh, one of those radio stations where you call into like a, a calm woman or a dude that like uh, gets gives relationship advice you know that kind of yeah, stuff yeah, right yeah. hey like annie i'm having trouble with, sure. you know but it was like that but it was have for you ever low- called one of those no, absolutely not yeah no neither have I. and i've not just... listened to them but i listened to that in china because right. i would do like i would grade homework or something mm-hmm. while i was sitting there uh, this is circa you know 2008 9 10 right sitting there doing like school work or whatever and i would mm-hmm. listen i look out the window and there'd be this sunset going down the sm- past the smog line because right. the sun would set before it's supposed to because sure. the smog line is actually what's covering like the, a blanketing yeah. the sun yeah. and it gets a bright orange color when it gets covered in the smog you remember that yep i, do. I used to call it six o'clock sun in guangdong because right. like when it's below that smog line everything lights up orange yep and sometimes the, the sky will go purple yeah because of the smog yeah it's interesting weird. But I'd listen cool to the show, yeah. yeah, and these Shamato would call in, mm-hmm. and they would tell these heartbreaking stories of how their life was just so shit, right? right. And they're uh, they really have a crush on this other like Shamata girl right, at the right. at work or whatever at the factory, but they don't know how to tell her and stuff. And this guy would give these lonely heart. It's basically like a lonely hearts thing, right? Give them advice on how to approach her, how to talk to her, and it was all these stories of either uh, people from Hunan or, or Gansu or Sichuan or whatever going to Shenzhen or in Huizhou in this yep. Pearl River Delta area mm-hmm. to work at these factories and they're just heartbreaking tales. And I remember listening to that being like, that's really sad. Sure. And so I've always had an affinity for these kind of lost souls that are just absolute social rejects from from where they come from because they're just treated like such trash in the yeah. cities. Yeah, for sure. I always felt that. Oh, and that's why they lean into it, you know? You yeah. can tell. That's why they just uh, go all in with these ridiculous hairstyles and, and their, their way of yeah. life. Because, you know, they're not trying to be accepted and they no. know that they cannot kind of break into the... The, the normal sort of yeah thing. and i think i think a good way to cap that off is to say that uh you have to understand face culture in china yeah. and yeah. these people don't have face because yeah. they were it was kind of taken from them in the beginning they don't just, have a reputation just because of where they were born yeah because of where they were born they're already yeah. rejected from society so why not yeah throw your face away completely and just do this crazy shit yeah right? exactly <laughs> it's kind of the idea yeah uh, anyway it is fun we enjoy yeah. this subculture so we thought we'd uh bring you up to speed with some mm-hmm. of the new stuff that's come out and of course the, the natural habitat stuff, which we uh, 
managed to find it. We had Pretty to dig. Yeah, I remember, dude, you know, yeah. I had that and I was like, where is it? Where is yeah. it? Like looking through old phone like a files hole. and finally found them dancing in the woods. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. good fun. Love it. Yeah, cool. So I guess that kind of brings us to the end of the Soft Power Hour segment of our show. Yes. There's Shamata, May They Live On. And of course, we're looking Shamata forward to... Shamata One Sway. Yeah, Shamata One Sway. Uh, let's see what happens. We'll see how, how it progresses. You know, Maybe yeah. it catches on a bit more mainstream. Maybe, maybe it will. I'd maybe love to see it. Maybe it'll be it. like really cool. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, it's kind of like punk made a resurgence, you know, it back did. with the skateboarders and stuff. And it actually did fairly recently too. Like pop yeah. punk is coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe... Maybe Shamato will come back. Yeah. It's not that it died, by the way. It's yeah. still very much alive. It's just it's morphed. Yeah. Yes. Correct. It's morphed. Now anyway. it's all face filters and, and uh, funny ha- yeah, hairdressers and stuff. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yes. Uh, cool, guys. Let's, uh, let's move on. Are we going to answer a couple Super Chats before we head our next? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Okay. I'll, um, I'll, uh, maybe I'll leave the Shamata stuff in the background. While oh, you're... sure. Yeah. Just for a vibe. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, friend of the show, says, uh, Home again. Glad to be with you. Was airborne last week after a red-eye fly ba- flight back to Australia. Back at the crack of dawn for the show again. Oh, cool. And he says, great show uh, video today, Sea Milk. Oh, thank you very much. It used to frustrate me how Europe would only stand up to Russia for the most part and not China. Hope times are changing. And I do think they are. Uh, stay awesome, gents, and keep up the nice work. Thanks, Dylan. And thank Charles you. says, uh, about two or three years ago, there were much fewer, if any, shills. Uh, yeah. did you happen to know why that is uh, very easy actually and i did a whole we've done yeah. multiple videos on this but there is uh, xi jinping came up with a campaign yeah. called tell a good china story yeah and anytime you see pro china media coming out of foreigners living in china it's part of that campaign whether they're yeah. doing it consciously or not or whether they're just going on a trip it's all part of called Jiang Hao Zhong Guo Gu Shi, which means tell a good China story. Yeah. And that campaign had billions of dollars thrown at it. Yeah. So that's why you saw a bunch of shills come out of nowhere. You saw channels and we saw this. You can go back to any of the shills and you can argue with them till, till uh, they're blue in the face. They won't be able to give you a solid answer. Yeah. Every single one of them started doing that in 2019 during the Hong Kong yeah, protests. Yeah, during the Hong Kong protests. Yeah, they and, all kind of started then. And that they got co-opted. Mm. So if you're ever faced with like an argument with one of these guys, you can tell them, I know quite literally you are basically a chinese propaganda agent. well look there's another angle to this as well and that is the fact that um as time passed with xi jinping in power in china it became less and less possible to do anything online yes, other other than to praise the chinese government right. so if you're going to do a youtube channel we all know youtube needs to be it's a fairly narcissistic thing you know people film themselves talking about stuff sure. that's that's what it is we all have to admit that's that's where it all starts but if you're going to put yourself online and if you have a following, doesn't matter how you grew that following, you could have grown it through anything. I don't know if you were doing like, I don't know, makeup tutorials or something, and you, but, yeah. you're, but you're based in China. Right. Maybe you're like a food blogger. Yeah. You now, if you're in China now, and for the last, I'd say, four years, three, four years in China, whatever you do on the internet, if you've got eyes on you, you have to make sure that it never, ever crosses the line and never gets to a point of criticizing China in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Whether it's society, whether it's the government, you cannot say anything bad about China. So no. everybody's um, content has morphed to become a sure. sort of a shill thing. So you might have someone who just does food. Yeah, 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 but for sure. But now it's just like, wow, this Chinese food is amazing. It is incredible. And look at how great China is. I can take this high-speed rail and yeah. poverty alleviation or whatever else. They'll start to throw in all this pro-China propaganda stuff in order to basically safeguard themselves. Yeah. Because if you say anything critical, you will get a visit. You will get deported. I mean, the thing is, both of those things, both your take on this and my take goes hand in hand yeah, together it does. as it well. Does. Uh, and also, it's very easy to grow an audience, and in incredibly easy uh, to grow a Chinese audience yeah. because there's so many nationalists. By being a foreigner that praises the Chinese government and right. praises China, overnight you can get like hundreds of thousands of followers and, and tons it's of support. It's positive reinforcement because they yeah. hear propaganda every day, like Chinese nationalists, yeah. right? And if a foreigner says it, it's like, oh, yeah. So it's a very easy right. way to grow, grow your online presence and, uh, you know, that sort of thing, too. Yeah. David anyway. Lopan says the campaign must be started to stop Belt and Road projects. Yeah. Um, and he also said, I highly recommend the movie David Dave Made a Maze. Again. Who knows? I'm always scared by your movie choices, David. Yeah. But I appreciate it. And yep. AI Hollywood, thanks for becoming a member. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll read the next one after. Um, okay. So yeah. we have some, uh, we got to tell you about something awesome that we did on Monday. 
oh, are we going to do so show you something cool that we did yes. on Monday? Yeah, okay. Let me. Um, we'll say goodbye to the Shamata for now. Don't worry, yeah. they'll be back. Oh, they'll, well, be they'll, back. they'll be back. Okay, we're going to play a little something here, and then we'll explain to you what it is. Let's uh, get us out. Those of you who don't know, by the way, we the have this this shit, show on Monday. Yeah. Of absolute apocalyptica. We're about to take you in the depths yeah. of hell. Yeah. He's wearing later hosen. <laughs> I wasn't filming it because I thought it was weird. I'm going to put it in the grass. <laughs> Kni, right? And they've got the most horrid coffee. <laughs> it's so It's the bad. worst. Yeah, it's piss. That looks very safe to me. Instead of NBA, it's like BNA. Very cool pig. It tasted like grandma's potpourri. Very good, good, good. <laughs> Look at that. What, it's oh, got cashew some, nuts. Yeah, cashews on it. <laughs> like, cashews on it. These like those so these bad. Terrible sausages. But it just, like, super. <laughs> this melted. is a fancy cheese platter. <laughs> what else do we have here? Yeah, how about some <laughs> steamed ass <laughs> That's my dirt, dirty clip. peanuts? <laughs> you couldn't even eat the food. It no, was so it bad. Was... You know that reminds me of clam man. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> it's so gross. Tea Borger. Tea Borger. <laughs> There's one of the cockroaches we're talking yeah. about there. Can you see that logo? It's like a bloated <laughs> Colonel Sanders. He's Half an orange peel. Sniffing it? That's Over. my aunt. My like, aunt did like that. This. Yeah, guys. So basically the uh, Shaban Ho show, for those of you who don't know, it's our patron exclusive show every Monday. If you're interested in catching up, yeah. it's really just us shooting the breeze and showing stuff that doesn't make it to our normal channels and shows. Yeah, but it's not its not dregs, it's like special stuff. Yeah. Um, and if you wanna come hang out, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. We have such a good time on Mondays. Yeah, we'd love to see you there. So if you uh, have the opportunity, please yeah. follow the link. Oh, one thing below. though, if you missed, we've done three episodes so far, yeah. we do it every week, but you, if you sign up now, you still get to see all those three episodes, they're still up. Sure. And they unlock when you when you sign up. Yeah, that's so, correct. This, this Monday we're gonna be talking about the fake Manchurian, it's ridiculous. Oh, it's a great story. Yeah, yeah. It's so a great story. anyway, let's move on from that. It's time for Wu Mao Corner, where we talk about Wu Mao, and those are the China's 50 Cent Army, the really sort of nasty, nasty trolls and haters at work on, well, for the Chinese government. Either get paid or they do it voluntarily. Yeah. This time around, well, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get into uh, what's going on here. We got Xi Jinping. Okay, everybody knows now. By the way, I'm scared to even talk about. This. Yeah, the, Xi Jinping. It's everyone knows you cannot make fun of him. Okay, yeah. in China, if you make fun of him, it's like it's like talking about Voldemort or something. You cannot. Like you will get into trouble. Yeah, pop culture aside, it's a you're, you're, it's illegal. It's illegal. You'll go to jail yeah. or be disappeared. So I mean. If you say, for instance, uh, he had a nickname everyone made, Shi Baozi, you know. And that which, was innocuous. Because he's very famous for going to this Baozi shop. Baozi is a steamed bun. I'm sure you know that by now. But a steamed bun usually has some pork inside or some vegetables. They're delicious. Yeah. Yeah, he loves pork, by the way. He just does pork. But, Aaron Angela said Xi Jinping shouldn't eat pork. That's cannibal. <laughs> it's cannibalism. Wow. Nice. Anyway. I didn't say Yeah. That. Fact of the matter is, um, he went to this Baozi shop. And it became mad famous because he went there. Okay, so yes. everyone was going to this Bowser shop because Xi Jinping was there. And didn't they like make a gold toilet or something? <laughs> because he went to go look at a toilet or whatever. Remember that? We are Chao Mato Exactly. Uh, anyway, the fact of the matter is um, people were starting to call him Xi Bowser because I guess he's a little fat. Looks like a little bit yeah, of a. Yeah, but I think it was but, more like he but, loved the Bowser and it's like. It's a cute kind of nickname. like a fun nickname. Yeah, it was nice. And that's like a no go. Now you oh, call him yeah. Xi Bowser, it gets deleted off yeah. the internet. You're not allowed to do that. It's like it's sacrilege, basically. Because he is now, he's become a deity in China. Yes. He really is like a holy figure, and you cannot say his name in vain. No. Okay, because he's no. the most important thing crime. in China. He's literally the most important thing in China. If you, I think we're going to do a whole episode we on have this, to. but we're going to do a deep dive on Chinese media websites. Mm -hmm. And I would say 50% of the screen real estate on every one of these things is dedicated to him. To Xi Jinping. Yeah. It's all about his thoughts. It's all about his yeah. his way. And it's all about like what why he's, he's great. why. Yeah, exactly. Let's they make documentaries following his footsteps. Yeah, like where he once looked at a field. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's boring. So this, this this man has been elevated to the status of literally a god in China. It's very much in line with the Kim family of North yeah. Korea, and I don't, I never make that comparison just to get shock value. Oh, it's like North Korea. I hate no. when people do yeah. that. It is, and has become yeah. that, and it's deified. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. 
You know, like who makes a gold toilet because he mean, looked at a toilet or whatever. Ah, oh, it's just stupid. This tile that he stood on is now like sacred. It's that kind of shit. It's, yeah, it's, it's bad. gotten out of hand. It's bad. Okay, it was bad enough before. Yeah. Um, because you can't insult like government leaders and stuff in China. It's just a, it's a no-no. But now it's gotten to the point where it's just, you may not yeah. say his name in vain. Yes. And everything he says is like the word of God. Yes. It's terrible. So this is going to be in relation to something uh, that's very popular in China, and that's plays on words. Yeah. And plays on words in China are when you take a word and you make it sound kind of similar, and yeah. then it becomes a different meaning. That is like a very common way to make a joke in China. Sure. It's also a common way to get around censorship in China. Correct. Like so, hoxie. Like hoxie, which, yeah. Which means social harmony or harmony. Um if you say that the tone's a little different, it's river crab. River crabs. So they they used to make like memes with river crabs in it when they were talking about social harmony. Well, yeah, cool. Because harmony in China, to harmonize something means to censor it. Yeah. So in China, they'd be like, oh, that article got harmonized. Yeah. And then they started cracking down on that yeah, because so that's that, supposed oh, to be a positive word. So they yeah. said, oh, it got river crab. It got river crab. But then right. they cracked down on that. Then, you can't and then say river started, crab Then anymore. they started saying that's HX. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. And then they anyway, probably cracked down. They, on they that. did crack down on that. So anyway, just uh, to say so you know. yeah. So mm. to understand this, a good example I think is to uh, is to tell you a, a common joke in China. Yeah. And that's cao ni ma. Yes. Cao ni ma means grass mud horse, yes. which it's it, a llama basically. It's a llama right? or an alpaca. Or it's something. an alpaca llama. It's actually not what? that they made it up. Right? What's the difference between a llama and an alpaca? I think one of them has like bushier hair on it's the top. Probably the alpaca. Yeah, alpaca's yeah. got that fro. Is it? There's know? like an alpaca farm down the road from us. Yeah. yeah you know is. what I mean? It's kind of totally. interesting to see. Yeah. Not too close. Too close. No, but I mean, you know, not, like not that close. It's just down. Well, when I say down the road, you know, like there is yeah. an alpaca. There's actually farm. a few, believe yeah. it or not. And it was just bizarre to me because I hadn't seen any on the west coast. Yeah, but they're like all over all the place. All over East, yeah. I just sure. like, what's going on? Yeah, I, I don't get because they don't eat them. I, I actually wanted to talk fur. to a guy. I wanted to talk to one of the guys actually not that long ago when I saw him, but he was walking inside, and I want to ask him, "What are you actually doing with these?" I know. I feel like it's got to be the hair. <laughs> yeah, it's anyway. probably there. Anyway, grass mud horse tao ni ma. So, so think about it, like a grass mud horse is like that's what they're calling an alpaca. Yeah. The reason that they came up with that is because the same word but different tones. So you remember Chinese is a tonal language. Yeah. I, and I won't say it. Yeah. But if you say it the exact same words, I'll say it without tones. Tao ni ma. If you said it in without tones, right? If you shouted somebody very angrily saying those yeah. words, it basically means f your mom. Yeah, f your mom. So, so very very offensive, right? Yeah. Now to get it's around, it's actually that. the most, probably the most common insult oh, in China. Oh, so it's so common. Yeah, so you hear it a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Of course you will. Of course. Now the point being is that when that was censored because you're not allowed to swear and stuff online, mm -hmm. people would write C N M. Yeah. Right. Then they got rid of that. So then they came up with Tao Ni Ma Grass Mud yeah, Horse. Yeah, exactly. And it became like an internet thing. It's an internet phenomenon. I have a freaking T-shirt for yeah, sale about yeah. it even now. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, but anyway. That's what you have to understand when I talk about these things. Okay. So recently, something got leaked. Yeah. Um, a lot of leaks in China these it's days, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there's a leak in kind of API type stuff on yeah. what is being censored. And China, the Chinese government doesn't want people to know what they're censoring. Yes. They just want it to be censored. Yeah. So that's, and it works very well because if people try to type something and it just doesn't come up. Uh, yeah. They like, just oh. think it's like, oh, it's... Uh, it's a glitch. Yeah, right? exactly. <clears throat> so, so like bank protests and it just doesn't come up and they're like, I wonder why. Correct. Mm. So there was a, a kind of an unofficial official crackdown on typos, as they called it. Yeah. Now, these typos were actually just ended up being 500 plus different ways to play off of Xi Jinping's name. Yeah. So it like, had nothing to do with anything else. It was yeah. only for Xi Jinping. Yeah. So 500 plus basically funny jabs at Xi Jinping yes. by changing the, the, the characters because it still sounds similar, almost the same. Yes. Yeah, can you, can you read us some? So, um, <laughs> some journalists were calling him Accelerator-in-Chief because he's getting a lot of stuff done or right, something Right, Accelerator-in-Chief, right? yeah. But the play on words, people were calling him Driving in Reverse Emperor because <laughs> he's taking China backwards. Yep. And believe it or not, there is a lot of underground sentiment against Xi Jinping's leadership in China sure. because he's driving the country into the ground where a lot of people saw progress. Maybe they were initially excited about him, but they're really, really pissed off. Well, at look him. at look at us. We were incredibly positive yeah. about China while we were living there um, up until the point that Xi Jinping took over. And it took a couple of years for his ideas to really filter down yes. into society. Yes. But 
he has changed the direction of China. Yes. And he's changed it into this closing off us versus them, xenophobic, we are number one, yes. the rest of the world sucks, you know, it's their fault for everything that we do wrong. It's He's villainized foreigners, villainized other nations, and that's his strategy is to make it like, again, this whole woman, jong yeah, cult of like, personality. Like, almost like that where we talked about uh, outside versus inside yeah. city people. It's also like outside country people, like foreigners yes, versus yes. Chinese, and he's really tried to capitalize on that. Yeah. And, and it's been a real issue. Yeah, um, it's awful. It's really bad. Just like um, you can keep talking. Yeah. Anyway, so um, Xi Jinping really has unfortunately uh, put China in re reverse very quickly, yeah. and he did this, of course, also by not biding his time. Yes. You know that was always Deng Xiaoping put that in. It's like bide bide your time, hide your strength. Yes. Okay. Xi Jinping's too impatient. He's like. I want China to be number one. We're strong now. We're just as strong as America. We're going to prove that we're just as strong, if not better. In fact, we are better. We're yeah. just going to do it. You know what I mean? Correct. So he's unfortunately jumped forward with this stuff and made it a big, big pen in the ass. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. So what's what's going on here? Nothing. Just uh, it's switched. You know, and it does that switch account. Oh, thing. right, right. Switch account. All right. Get I back copied in. all the super chats. Don't worry. Okay. We're still cool. Live. That's good. Getting back in. So. Um, yeah. So that was that was banned, right? That, okay. That driving in reverse emperor. So, Let's hear some of these other ones because it, it sure. can't stop there. Right? No, 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 no. Remember, there's five hundred plus. Five hundred plus. Some yeah. of the best. Okay. Uh, Shisalini. <laughs> Shisalini, like Mussolini. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you got Shisalini. Uh, comparison to the fascist dictator, and believe it or not, a lot of the undercurrent pro democracy Chinese, not even pro democracy, like people that are kind of against Xi Jinping's leadership, yeah, uh, call him a fascist dictator, not a communist dictator. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fascism going around uh, the cult of personality. It's kind right. of similar you'd see in Mussolini or Hitler or something like that. Yeah, of course. Deifying the father figure. Or like, you know, whatever, Stalin. Yeah, it's all the same. It's all yeah. the same. This worship of authority. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sw <laughs> this one, swim a thousand meters a day. And that was banned. Do you know why? Why? That was, I think you, you'll you know exactly if you think about it for it's a like, little while. Is that a Mao Zedong? Yeah, yeah it's, it's Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong. He said like to, right before the, or right during the beginning of the Cultural Revolution, he talked about how swimming is going to bring the tides of change that China needs, and he did this whole like swimming in the river. He's just plopping around like a like bloated a fish. It's a he looks like a dead fish. It's the most like horrible a, thing. You know, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a <laughs> bloody <laughs> half dead carp. carp. Yeah. You ever want to see something <laughs> pathetic? You. Look up Mao Zedong swimming. Yeah, you don't want to see it. No, you but don't. You, but you do. Yeah, yeah. You? yeah. You really want to check it yeah, out. Yeah, you should. You should take a look. So they blend. You know, that's funny because that's a, a Mao quote that's being censored. And there's a reason for that, and that's because they don't want them. They don't want people to compare uh, Mao to well, Xi Jinping in the context of the Cultural Revolution, because yes. actually, what's happening right now is the second Cultural Revolution it is. within China. It's awful. It's yeah. completely distilling Chinese culture into deifying Xi Jinping, and that's it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Whoa, what? What's this one? <laughs> you can't read that one. Right there. <laughs> Foreskin Xi. Xi Bao Pi. There's a Xi Bao Pi. <laughs> Foreskin Xi. There's, there's a okay. reason this happened. <laughs> okay. And this is called the Streisand effect. Okay, yeah, which we do have here somewhere. Where is that? There we go. Can you see me? I've never seen such a good example of the Streisand effect. Foreskin Xi, there's a reason people were calling him that, and that's because Xi Bao Zi, so the very innocuous, nice name. The yes. nice, the, like the 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 steam bun she, right? Yes. Oh, lovingly steam buns. He likes steam buns, right? Yeah, yeah. When they conk that out, yeah. right, it's gonna create people questioning, like, why the hell would they ban that, right? Yeah. So people are like, you know what? Screw it. He, now he's she bao pi, which yeah, means, bao pi it's sounds like bao zi. It's foreskin, but it means foreskin. Yeah. So they're like, screw it. We're gonna call him <laughs> she foreskin. She foreskin. The Chinese people do have a great sense of humor, especially sure. the people that are against his leadership. Correct. Um. And they so they banned that. So then of people course. started naming it "wash the foreskin." She <laughs> yeah, she because she means to wash. You know, <laughs> wash <laughs> wash foreskin is his name. Okay, breathe in the foreskin like who she? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> breathe this is in so the much foreskin. Funnier, you know Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But to breathe is who she. Yeah. So she. Yeah, she. So she is to respirate. To yeah, breathe. yeah. To breathe in the foreskin. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> foreskin show uh this is this is good because you just taught people characters you know shuang shi yeah 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 she means delight yeah yeah right? happiness and delight <laughs> delight in the foreskin <laughs> delight yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Foreskin <laughs> happiness is what you could really like translate that to. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. yeah. Um, tie the foreskin. Yeah. You have cherish the foreskin. Cherish the foreskin. Play with the foreskin. <laughs> she <laughs> Okay. Raided the foreskin. Raided, okay. Know the foreskin. Yeah, yeah. Know the foreskin. <laughs> yeah. Giggle at the foreskin. Giggle at like, the foreskin. Giggle. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> what? These just go on forever. Well, there's 500 plus, right? Yeah, there's 500 plus. That's but, hilarious. So some of the less, like, dirty ones. Yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> It's just listening. Yeah. Some people are coming up, coming up in the chat. She, she scroll a teeny. <laughs> it's like she yeah. baka. Yeah. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Tsinghua graduate, which I love. Oh, dude, that's you can explain that's, that. One. Well, that, that's the thing. Tsinghua is, of course, the most prestigious university in China. Yeah. Right. It's like the, I guess, the Harvard yeah, or of Oxford or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Right. Yeah. Ivy League type thing. Yeah. Um, and apparently. You know, Xi Jinping graduated, but everyone actually knows that he's very poorly educated. You know, middle school. Yeah, that's that's it. We've and, had experts have confirmed this. Yeah, the middle school education. Yeah, so it's kind of a dig at him saying like, "Oh, he's a Qinghua Qinghua graduate." graduate. Eh? Yeah, that's, and that's a snide one. Now, I mean, that's the <laughs> thing though, because he claims to be that, and the whole media and everything says he's that. Why would they censor it? You, it's because he, disgu- they, they're actually not trying to censor the fact that people are saying he's a Tsinghua graduate. They're trying to censor discussion to question yes, whether to he's question. a Tsinghua graduate. Because every yeah. freaking Chinese person on the ground knows that he is not a Tsinghua graduate. No, no. Everyone knows this. Yes, of course. I mean, this is the guy that says, I love books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if you, li- if you know Chinese and you hear any of the speeches or any like, uh, you know, off the record stuff that he- that's been on camera, not off the record, but off of the, the presidency, the, yeah. you know, before he was, I don't know, president, before he was dictator. Yeah, dictator, yeah. Um, you'll hear, I mean, he's just not a... You can tell, you can tell through his speech that he's not very educated. Yeah, it's He's not like it's not uh, eloquent is the right word. Yeah, it's really not eloquent. It's so. not like you know the whole like making fun of uh, Biden and stuff. That's due to age. Yeah, like that's dementia. Age, that's or not intelligence. Yeah. I'm talking about you can go back 30 years and see Xi Jinping talk, yeah. and he's he speaks like a middle schooler. Yeah, he does. It's that's just not. It's not all there. Sure. Um, the last one here that I have here is the Devil Mao Incarnate. And Devil a, Mao incarnate. Because I like it. Chinese people don't want to see another Mao Zedong. No, they want no. China to be friends with other countries in the world. A lot of Chinese people do. Yeah, unfortunately, um, and mm. and you can look at uh, his reign of terror. Basically, has changed the world's attitude towards China. In fact, your yeah. recent video of the one prior to the, the one you've just released was all about. Or was it this? This, this one? one. Yeah. yeah, it's just how. The attitudes towards China have changed so much. Drastically. Ten, and we're talking in less than 10 years. Yeah, 10 years ago, there was a much more favorable yeah. idea of China around yeah. the world and Europe and so on. And now it's got less and less and less and less. And it's because of all this wolf warrior crap that he put into play. You know, this whole we're strong and you're weak and shut up and we're cool and being very undiplomatic and being like saber rattling. There's and, no reason for that either because yeah. like... The, the central leadership, this is the boring side of things, but the central leadership going on behind the scenes elected, put Xi into power mm. because he was so non-confrontational and yeah. such a safe choice because yeah. well. he was groomed so well in the party, like between both sides, both cliques, right? They, yeah. they both agreed. They're like, you know what? This is a safe ass choice. Yeah. It'll keep China on that trajectory of kind of open it up a little bit. You know, getting keep, rich. Keep taking advantage. Yeah, keep, take advantage. Keep you know. stealing. Keep doing yeah, all that. Yes. Do all that stuff, but be friendly but about be it. But be friendly about yeah. it. And then the rest be like, of the world oh, so be like, we didn't, that's fine. We didn't really mean to steal your military secrets, but, you know, it kind of happened anyway. Let's continue yes. to be partners. As, <laughs> hey, as long as they're tit for tat and they're not acting like an enemy, yes, right, yes. then that's not as bad. It's yeah. just better for the world, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, he turned into an absolute beast, a yeah. real beast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very dangerous consolidated for the all the, the power the military and and yeah. all the power to to just him yeah and started to kind one, of one yeah. of the greatest threats in modern day yes to be honest anyway let's uh, move on yeah. from this topic shall we yeah sure because we've got um quite a bit more to cover here we do we're going to talk a little bit about the absolute absurdity of chinese media and we're talking about social media accounts in the west Okay, and this was brought to my attention. I was following uh, somebody released this on Twitter, and I thought this would be interesting to talk about. So here what we have is the China Daily. Now, China Daily, as you see in the top there, it says China State Affiliated Media. This is their official Twitter, okay? 
Now, they have 4.2 million followers, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, here's a tweet that they pinned. You know, a pinned tweet is you put it at the top of your Twitter page so anyone who visits your Twitter profile will see this. It has the most traffic. Yes, okay. Most interaction. So, it's been up for two days, okay? With 4 two million days. followers. Yeah, 4.2 million followers. It was up for two days. It has a total of 193 views and f- <laughs> and 24 likes. Hold on, can I, can I do some math? Yeah, sure. Please do the math. So... So the view, let's go by views. Okay. Was it 193? Yeah, 193 views. Um, and a view doesn't mean that people have really interacted with no, it. No, it's no, just no. like it's scrolled through and it, it's played or whatever. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, that is an interaction score. Yes. Okay, so a percentage. So, oh, I want to give you a guys a metric to go off of. Okay. In YouTube, like when we had a partner manager. Yeah. Uh, what they said was, oh, you guys are doing great because what you want is an interaction rate of between 10 and 20% is considered good. So yes. let's say this is a really easy metric. If you have 100,000 subscribers, if 20,000 people view your video, that's yes. a 20% interaction rate. That's quite good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, on this channel, we actually do great. Yeah. That means most most people interact with, most subscribers interact with this channel, which is very high and it's unusual. Mm. Um, it's because we got such an awesome audience. We do. We mm. a, as a shout out to you guys. Yeah. Um, this this interaction rate. Yeah. Not a pinned comment. So this is an unnatural amount of views. Yes. <laughs> it's higher than it's, average. This is their higher than average views. Yeah. It is point zero 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 four percent. Yeah. That's so it's 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 not even a half of a percent. No. It's it's not even a half of a half of a percent. Yeah. So you have to understand. Okay, we're getting to the, the point here, but it's pretty obvious to see that these um, accounts that they set up as, um, you know, they're, they're outside face to the world, right? So mm. this is China State Media. They put this out there. Yes. They, they need to make it look as if it's important that yes. a lot of people are following. So you can see it's just fake, the amount of followers and views. They pay for that, and they also get their prisoners and woomals yep. and everyone to go and like and follow and subscribe. Happens with the shill channels as well. Twitter, it's, ding, 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 ding. First yeah. ding, ding today is yes. Twitter. Have a look at this. You're going to want to weed out about, well, let's see, 99.999% of the accounts there. And I'm not joking. They should, yeah. and they do do this and they're pretty good actually. Yeah. But get in there and start clean and shop because yeah. this is outlandish. Yeah. How do you have 4.2 million followers and only 193 views in two days? No. Okay. This, this is someone. It gets worse. This is someone I just want to do a little headlight, a highlight on. Okay. She came out of my radar when I was doing my video about uh, Chinese creating a simp army. Right. And the reason I found this so shocking was she came out of my radar because her name on YouTube was Miss Wow Tech. Yeah. And I, but I found her, and she acts like she's a tech vlogger. Like, of course, I figured out it was state media, probably within five minutes. Yeah. But it was just reeked of that. But mm-hmm. they tried to just, like, take that away, and she doesn't have a state label on her YouTube. But I found her exactly the th- uh, same person yeah. on Facebook called Techie Rachel, mm. which is masquerading as a different person, covering the exact same content, same videos for CGTN. She's actually a CGTN. Well, yeah, that's what I was about to say, because the video I'm releasing next week, um, or maybe tomorrow, but probably mm-hmm. next week, um, which is all about China and space and the space yes. race and stuff. Um, I was looking into her and I found her Chinese name and she is actually just a CGTN reporter yeah. and she's a full on employee of them. And she appears on their website as an employee. China's just trying to trick the world yet again. Try, just trying to say that the state media, mm. the person who works for state media, in other words, the government, is just some kind of blogger or something. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the vo- the followers. How <laughs> no, many no, followers? No, no, oh, okay. Can you point out the banner? <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, China. And it's mm. like an arrow at the dirt. I don't... That's not very nice, Rachel. I, I, look, probably something's cut out. No, of course. I just thought that was but very sloppy. It's like, I'm pointing at, the, maybe that is actual China. She's in China. Oh, so yeah, she's that like, makes wow. Sense. The, I'm on the ground. Yeah, this they always is like China, to say yeah. I'm on the ground. Yeah, exactly. This is China. Um, anyway. Anyway, 1.3 million followers, okay? Okay, so she's got 1.3 million followers on her Facebook page, right? You'd be impressed. You'd be like, wow, that's pretty impressive, right? So okay. let's look at this post here. This, mm-hmm. And I, I specifically didn't choose one from today. No, you the, gave it time. Yeah, so so like time. a mature post that's been it's up a for a post. while, right? Okay. This one has 66 likes. Okay. Okay. 66, I should say interactions. Yeah. 66 interactions. So 66 interactions. Yeah, get us out of there. So we'll yeah. do some math here. Yes. Uh, 1.3 million, but it's got like 66 interactions. And it's got five comments yes. and one share. 
We are now so at five comments out of 1.3 million followers. Yeah. Okay, and this was when was this released? Like, uh, sorry, I can't so it's see. June this 15th, last I think. week. Uh, last week. Okay, so it's a week old post. Yeah. Okay, so five comments. So, for example, if if you post a YouTube video, yeah, after a week, you'd like to hit 200,000 vi- uh, views, right? Yeah, and, and you have one million subscribers, correct? Yeah, if I hit 200,000, I'm happy with it. But that's, that's what I'm saying. That's your goal, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's good. Remember we said the 20%? Sure. We're looking at her. She's got more followers than you. Yeah. Okay. And she has achieved a interaction. So you have an interaction rate average of 20%. Sure. Hers is 0.00005%. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, because it's not real. No, of course. It's just bullshit. Yeah. Facebook, you've done a great job. You've labeled her state media. All of these followers are not real. They're not real. It's so bad to the point where I'm going to do an expose pretty soon. I've, yeah. I've already decided I'm going to do it, whether yeah. it gets views or not, on, on her. Right. And not her personally. There's a her, bunch like her. On her state media apparatus that had to choose one person to do a video with because they've drank their own Kool-Aid and yeah. think that their followers are real at this point. Yeah. And they actually struggled to find one person to go on video with her. Yeah. It's hilarious yeah that's it's going to be good yeah so anyway uh 1.3 million followers but her post got 66 five comments yeah. and one share right okay so that's Continue. that that is cgtn by the way cgtn yeah. reported that is a government thing we all know Li jing jing of course another reporter five million followers yeah you know how you know it's a great metric for this what you know what's harder to get uh fake fake subscribers for is youtube yeah um so if you do that, apparently they catch on pretty easily, right? right. Now it does happen. Of course it does, it does happen, but to a much lesser extent than Facebook and Twitter. So you'll notice like she has like, I don't know, 30,000 subs on her on her YouTube, which is where all the focus goes to. Yes. And it shows you that you can't really, that that's fairly organic, right? Yeah. The, in reality. When we look at this, we have 2.5 million followers, right? So here's a post here. I like how she liked her own post. Yeah, she did. She liked her own post, yeah. Um, uh, go ahead and, and remove us so I can oh. actually see because that post is confusing. That's her tweet. It's not from two hours ago. Okay. That's her own tweet that she took a screenshot yeah. of for her Facebook post. That's right. Okay. So this was posted, I'm going to say a week ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, we had 50, is that 53? It looks like 53. 53. It's a really small, guys. The, the, the monitor we're looking at is on the wall. Zero comments? No, it's it got six? six. Okay, six comments. So yeah. Uh, 53, so two, so 53 divided by 2.5 million. Wow, mm-hmm. that's even worse than Techie Rachel. Yeah, because 2.5 million is a lot of people. And that's you, double. And you only get six comments. Yeah. That's the thing. Look, it it's, it's mind-blowing because out of right. 2.5 million people, because you know how this stuff works, right? Right. When you post something, if you've got somebody following you on Facebook, it, it turns up in their feed. Right. Okay? That's, that's an interaction rate of... Point zero 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 seven. Yeah. Percent. Correct. Go ahead. It's it's absurd, okay? Um, and again, it's just to prove how the Chinese government, in order to try and boost its online presence, um, cheats and lies. Yes. Okay? It's as if we decided, hey, you know what? We want to, I don't know, look successful. So let's open a Facebook page. And we get an organic, like, say... 5,000 followers, sure. okay, after a couple yeah. of weeks of promoting it. And we're like, that's not good enough. People aren't going to take us seriously. Yeah. So we just go and basically hire a bunch of these bots in China. They've got bot farms and they outsource them to various different places like Laos and Cambodia and stuff or whatever. Yeah. And we do. just pay but them they money. Do do that. Yeah. yeah. We pay them money. They set up fake mm-hmm. accounts and they all go like mm-hmm. our stuff. And oh, we suddenly have like a half a million or we have a million. We just paid for it. None of that's real. No. It's hollow and empty. It's very easy to see when you look at metrics like yeah. this. And so when we post mm. something, there's only a couple of thousand real people that see it. But in this case, you know, 2.5 million, it got broadcast to 2.5 million people. And there were five, six comments. It's ridiculous. I can do you better. And probably one of those is hers. Yes, I can do you better. What? Go to the next slide. Okay. <laughs> you, want to see some, you want to see some real interaction? Yeah, let's see this. See what you got. Okay, so those, by the way, the, the Li Jingjing is a state reporter. Yeah, okay. all these are state yeah. media. What do we C- got here? CGTN is China, what is it called? Global Ch- China Global Television, Television Network. Network, whatever. It's China Central TV. It's the English language version of the, yeah. the, the Chinese, uh, you know, biggest media, yes. like whatever. It's basically just state media. Yes. No, it is state media. Right. It has 118 million 
followers on Twitter. This is Twitter, right? Yes. No, yeah. this is... Why has it got a blue check mark? No, this is... Uh, uh, Facebook? Facebook. Okay, sorry, Facebook. It is verified. So 118 million 118 followers. 118 million. That's a lot. By the way, mm -hmm. oh, but China has 1.4 billion people. Maybe they love CGTN. Number one, it's English. Yes. So this is not for Chinese people. Yeah, no, it's not. Number two... They Facebook can't. is blocked, it's in, blocked China. in China. How ironic is it that a state media account has 118 million followers in the country where it's blocked? It's yeah. illegal. Yeah. So 118 million followers. That's a lot. Okay. Yes. We're not talking. That's insane. Yeah. We're not talking one or two million. No. We're not talking 10 million. No. Fifth, not even like 50 million. No. We're talking 118 million followers on Facebook. Right. Okay, let's see what they get for their views over here. Let's take a quick look. What is this? We had 324 interactions. So let's okay. look at 118. By the way, one, two, three, three one, two, comments. Three. Now, those interactions are just like if someone clicked a like. Yeah, I, I understand that. I'm and looking you at think yeah. a lot more, wouldn't sure. it? Yeah. I'm being generous. I'm, I'm all about the comments because that's when someone actually cares about writing something. They've seen sure. something. Three comments. Right. And this is also from like, like, uh, like not, it's well, they not post, like right away. When no, was they, this posted? They, I think today, but they posted yeah. like 40 posts. So I went to yeah. like the last one of them. Yeah, the last one whatever. says seven hours ago, whatever. So this one is a 0. 000 0.00002% uh, interaction ratio. Yeah. I mean, guys, honestly... This is Chinese state media with its bullshit, lies, stolen, theft followers, yeah, okay? Yeah. None of that's real. It's Facebook, bots. Clear, clear this out. What how, are you doing? How does it have 118 million followers but only three comments on a post? We have probably like, on our Facebook account, I think we have like 6,000 followers or something. And we th I think we get like 800 interactions. Sure. So... What? Because it's, it's real. Yes. Again, this is the Chinese government. This is their fake numbers. This, this is why when you see the GDP numbers coming out of China, or it's a great comparison. You know, that, great comparison. What you're seeing is whatever they want to make. Just up. make it up. They just make it up. This is fake. Right. It's false. It's theft and Dude, lies. Even some of these likes are probably fake. As well. Of course. <laughs> the they're they're liking it themselves. They get everyone in the office, <laughs> in the office. to go like it. Yeah, there's one more. I, th okay. I think there's one more. Maybe not. Let's find out. Either way. That's... Yeah, there, there's one more. Okay, here we got China Daily. How many followers? We have 105 million. Yeah. Okay, so that's close. 105 million. It's a lot of people, right? So they posted like a hundred times today, by the way. You know what it is? That's bloody outrageous. It certainly is. It really is. So let's take a look. 105 million. Speaking of which, he works for China Daily. Uh, yeah, he does. Um, they made a post five hours ago. Okay. Yeah, but that was like the hundredth post they had made. Sure. Like there was a billion posts today. Um, had 158. 158. Uh, um, interactions had 16 comments so they got more comments than than all the other ones wow, combined look at, look at you guys basically i mean if you do the math you're talking at a point zero 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 one five percent interaction rate i mean this is the worst interaction rate i've ever seen on the internet period yeah it, of all things i've ever seen in my life how on earth do you get 105 million followers but only 16 comments on a post that's a day old I mean, I, if I was to say the organic amount of people that actually went to go like this page without bots, without the algorithm pushing it because of how many followers I had, I would say it'd probably have a thousand, so a thousand followers. Yeah. Not 105 million. Yeah. I mean, dude, you also have to think about it this way. Would you go to a CNN Facebook page and go and follow it and like it and leave, you know? There will be people that do, but the vast majority of people know. Yeah. They'll consume the media. They're not going to go be fans. And I'm talking about you're in a free society where yeah, you can do that. you can, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to go go and follow CNN's Facebook page or sure. Fox News's Facebook page. No, I'm not or, going to. I'm not going to do that. And I'm certainly not going to go follow China Daily. No. You know, I mean, that's... Chinese people can't even go there to follow it because no. it's illegal for them to use a VPN to. to How see ironic it. is it that China, the Chinese government spends millions of dollars making these accounts, running yeah. these accounts, and then if their own citizen went to go visit it, use a VPN, get on Facebook to go follow this, they, they could go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> that's just so ins. Like, yeah. what world do we live in? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. So we thought we'd point that out to you guys because it's kind of important to see the, the lies and the deception and the, the way China operates. Right. Okay, 
Um, now, we are going to move into world news next, guys. We're going to go straight into world view. And uh, we're unfortunately going to start it with something a little sad. Yeah. In fact, very sad. Um, when Shinzo Abe was assassinated, or when he was shot, he, he wasn't even pronounced dead yet, there is a reporter, a Chinese reporter, who was upset about it. Yeah. Okay. She, she showed a little distress. Yeah. She was uh, visibly upset about it when she was reporting on it. Okay. She wasn't like bawling. No, but she, no. you could tell she was yeah. upset. So she got attacked by the nationalists, yeah. of course. Like, you are a traitor to our country. You right. you know, blah, blah, the usual kind of stuff. And it didn't stop. It just got worse and worse. And the people piled in. And she became like the, uh, the, this ugly side of China, Chinese nationalism that we've seen surrounding the Shinzo yeah. Abe thing. And th to be honest, this same kind of disgusting, horrible, rabid nationalism that causes people to attack us and our families yeah. and yeah. go after our wives and our sure. children and try to dox us and try to... Right. Th that same vile side of Chinese nationalism went after her. Yeah. And they, they attacked her so much that she committed suicide. Right. And it's disgusting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a product of it's a product of Xi Jinping's modern China. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. And this whole celebrating the assassination of Shinzo Abe, which we've been seeing in China, this unashamed yeah. public and never challenged, by the way. You don't see people getting challenged. No. We're seeing it all the time. People oh, yeah. are posting like. Now they're making fun of it and like, oh, right, they right. cosplay as uh, the assassin and then they right. make these funny posts about like, oh, next time. Well, it's time. because think about it. Like the Chinese yeah. government made him a villain since day one because yeah. he was the guy that visited the war memorial that, yeah. that, that was very controversial in yeah. Chinese society. Yeah, China Yasukuni managed shrine. to get every other leader in Japan not to go to that. Yeah. Except for him, right. because his ancestors had something to do with it, right? Sure. Which obviously ruffled a lot of feathers, and I understand why. Yeah. But he's been vilified since day one yeah. because of that. So they can't backtrack and be like, no, don't do that, guys, yeah. right? Yeah, the only exactly. thing they can do is go to Western media and say, no, people aren't like that. Yeah. That's the only thing they can do. Right. But they allow it. So yeah. when you get these vile people attacking this this woman for you know being unpatriotic and being a, <sighs> a, a traitor to China, a race traitor and all that kind of crap they were calling her, you don't see the Chinese government stepping in and saying like, no, we probably shouldn't be behaving like that. No, this is, this is harassment and hate speech and bullying and right. whatever the hell else. They're just like, go ahead. Go ahead. Go for you know, it. This is this is good because you need to be patriotic, and you know, Correct. like anyone who steps out of line like her, we need to teach him a lesson. And so right. she killed herself. Right. And this is squarely on the heads of those disgusting Wu Mao and nationalists that attack people like her, people like us, anybody that they feel is not Chinese patriotic enough, or you know, who they they accuse of. Uh, being anti-China, whatever the case might be. Yeah. It's squarely on those people's heads, and yeah. it's disgusting. And it's also on the heads of the CCP. Yes. Anyway, so move on from that sad bit of news over there. Um, and so, some Daruchi sightings. Got some Daruchi uh, sightings. Subscribers. Eight is posted in our subreddit. Don't forget to go over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Daruchi sighting, we have a Daruchi floor mat. Okay. Which is great. Uh, these are not in China, by the way. No, th that's the funny thing is this bizarre brand has been exported to places like Canada and America. The legend of Daruchi, the guy, basically, if you guys don't know, a quick rundown is that guy, that wise man you see in the corner. Yeah. He was okay. an English teacher in Shenzhen, didn't even know what he was being paid for. He got paid about two, about 1500 bucks to be yeah. photographed for a, a mattress brand, Yeah, which China claimed was a foreign brand. Yeah, that's, that was the whole point. They, they, it was a white monkey. Yeah, they um, sell it to the local people in China as if it's some Italian and type. It's wicked expensive. Very, very like posh brand from right. overseas. Because they're ripping them off. You know yeah. how they do that? They'll like come up with a brand and say, this is a foreign brand. And yeah. then the people that don't know very well that do have money, they'll buy it. And they'll be like, Dude, oh, I'm buying something foreign. It's so bad. And of course it got better over time, but when I first got to China, you'd go into the supermarket mm -hmm. and you you go to buy like, I don't know, shampoo or something. And they'd have fake Japanese shampoo. In other words, it'd be a brand yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there'd be Japanese characters on it. Yeah, and I can, I can read, yeah. like, well, like hiragana and katakana. And I, yeah. I can read that. And I would look at it. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Just a jumble of garbage. Or yeah. they'd be jumbled English. Remember, yes. you get like means nothing it's just nothing. letters yeah like that hibble jibble kiss yeah. beer or hibble whatever kiss or whatever they just put random 
foreign looking words because everybody in China, especially at that time, knows that you can't really trust local products to be good. You, yes. But you can trust imported goods because there's quality control Correct. and whatnot. So that's where Daruchi comes from. So Daruchi, rest in peace, uh, mm -hmm. one of the original really kings of the white monkeys, yeah. uh, got paid to do this thing to look wise. Um, mm. Some shots you'll see him with a pipe. Yeah. They love this skinny white old man wise look. Yes. If you see anyone that's doing promotion for China stuff that's a skinny old white man look, yeah. that's their type. That's their type. And I can tell you there's some shills out there that fit that type real well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But anyway, uh, so they what they did was they duped the populace. And actually, it was funny. My father-in-law told me this story. And he was like, it's actually just a really bad, like low-end factory. He showed me where it was in Dongguan. Yeah. And uh, he showed me on uh, uh, Baidu Maps. And mm -hmm. he's like, this area is like some of the worst factory areas. You know, it's just some OEM crap, right. crap factory, mattress factory. So they did the, kind of like an internet expose about like, don't get ripped off by these. These are just our, our Chinese people ripping sure. each other off by saying it's some Italian like, right, fancy right. mattress. But the legend got so out of control. I mean, they built bronze statues. I yep. have me sitting on his lap. Yeah. A bronze statue of him outside of some of these stores. It got so out of, out of control that they started expanding abroad. Yes. And then now it's seen as some sort of luxury mattress brand in freaking America. I know. It's in interesting. In Australia. It's interesting. In Italy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that it's being used as a mat for the dog to take a turd on, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sense. Anyway, yeah, great so some, white some Daruchi, Daruchi sightings. And back to Miss Wao. And yeah, this is for Worldview. It's for Worldview. So are we going to answer a couple of. Yeah, let's do, uh, a, couple. Let's do a couple of super chats. We'll head for Worldview. Sure. AI Hollywood, thank you very much. I love these, these sniffer, no sniffer kids. Aaron Angela, yes. Xi Jinping. Oh, no, I already read that. Help, mm -hmm. the Braddy Barretts are back in the UK from David Brooks. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Better watch out. Better watch out. They might propagandize you. Uh, I might like, try to sell you some, like, <laughs> medicine that'll be damaging your health. Yeah. Yeah. Light Seeker. Hey, Jaunty, what country did uh, Saddam's Ira uh, Iraq invade in 1990? Um... Great. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that was... Nice. It was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ice cream van. Hey guys, I've been watching uh, for five to six years uh, cool. since I joined my Chinese class. That's cool. That's that's great. And thank you for wishing uh, uh, free Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Click all night. Plastic waste isn't an issue when you have the whole ocean to dump it in. You're right. That's very I true. I mean, it absolutely is a massive issue. I've I've been getting closer to the environment since I left China because I saw what damage China does to the environment. Yeah, you hard. you realize when you come to, but you know, when we moved China to made the me an state, environmentalist. Yeah, when we moved to the states, it's just it blows your mind. Yeah, because all of a sudden, and it doesn't matter West Coast, East Coast. Mm. You know, we've been around. You see nature. Yeah, even in yeah. the cities here. Yeah. Like you see birds. Yeah, you the, see birds. You actually see birds, and you see squirrels, and yeah. and and I'm also, not just talking like every once in a while a sighting, and you get like time. everyone trying to take photos like in China. I'm talking about everywhere you look. There's signs of life. Yeah, there's like insects and hummingbirds and whatever else that might be in your area, and it's it's delightful. Yeah, and the skies are usually blue and nice, mm. and it's just it changes it changes your your perception because. Up until this point, living in China, we really, you get deprived, but you don't realize you're being deprived of the very basics of nature. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And we don't want it to end up like that. No. Anywhere in the world. It's terrible. Hovik Arnian says, I remember you. Why, Hanan? Oh, okay. Good stuff. Where is that? That's here. Clan man. Why, <laughs> Hanan? Uh, just want to be a Laoban. Mm. Why, Hanan? Just want to be a Laoban. Laoban. That's a good <laughs> rap. David Brooks, my fr friends in Gloucestershire. Mm -hmm. Gloucester, it's probably. Glo yeah, Gloucestershire. 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 Mm -hmm. Told me that people in the forest of Dean are all smug and weirdos, so that explains the Barretts. Stay awesome, guys. I don't yep. I wouldn't probably, I probably wouldn't generalize everyone from a place. No, I wouldn't. Walter Deadman, fake beer? What, like a home or microbrew rebottled? No, no, just fake beers. Chemical beer. They just put like. I guess ethanol mixed it's, uh, with yeah. food coloring and some right. other like uh, uh, whatever to uh, give it bubbles. Like uh, some sort of carbohydrate runoff. You it's know? it's not good. It's byproduct. Yeah, you, they literally just mix different chemicals together and there you go. Yeah. And then, put it in the bottle and then put a cap on it. Yeah, it's bad. And you, you people die. All, yeah. Off, often. We almost we died. We almost died. We, we drank a whole, whole video about yeah, it. Yeah, we will. Maybe we'll do that one of these days for Shabbat. Reignite it. Yeah. yeah. The Mangleberry. And in the inevitable movie you make about your lives, who do you think should play you? 
I'm thinking Leo DiCaprio for Winston and Michael Cera for Sea Milk. Why does he get the hand <laughs> someone? Oh, that's interesting. I would never have thought. I never would have thought Fair that enough, somebody though. would choose that. Fair okay. enough. Arcus Twenty Three. He, he did do a good South African accent in uh, Blood Diamond. Yeah, he, yeah. So the, that's why it's you. Yeah, because yeah, he can, that makes he can get that, the. That makes sense. Yeah, because, that's why. That's why. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's that's the reason. Yes, yeah, so Arcus Twenty Three. I'm bad at asking questions to take my money anyway. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well. we'll okay. Move on. All right. Now it's time for us to do worldview. Okay, where we talk about everything in the world, usually with regards to China. And look. Recently, because my my video that I'm currently still editing right now is about space, you know, as in yeah. the final frontier. Yeah. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of research into China's space technology and, you know, their whole space program and everything. Mm -hmm. And you can't deal with Chinese technology without running into Miss Wow all the time. Like, seriously, okay? she's everywhere right now. And uh, she, by, but she's not. By the, uh, she has no following. By, by the way... The things that she says are... That's bloody outrageous. I, I, I just want to get into that for a second. The things that she claims, like yes. she, she has videos to say, China's new secret space plane has been flown and it's 100% successful and, it's, and she shows some CG crap that she got. And then I do research and no, it hasn't... It, there's no proof that anything's been done. No. Nothing has been successful. No. Um, so a lot of the claims that, and remember, she's a journalist. We're not talking about someone's little blog or whatever. These same videos that she puts on her, her other channels and stuff are on CGTN. Yes. By okay. the way, she is, this is not, I just want to preface this. This is, these are not her words. No. She's reading a script from the state. Yeah. yeah. And I can tell it's been directly translated from Chinese. Yes. It's, she's basically reading a teleprompter every time. I, I, I would highly doubt she even knows what she's saying. Sure. I mean, the fact of the matter is, though, yeah. when it comes to China's technology, the things she says are just lies. Yeah. Yeah. Like For lie? lack of a better lie. word. Okay, well, <laughs> she released a video that's like China's top five technological innovations. Yeah, you can skip past her blur. Which, by the way, in the video, she only showed two. Yeah. And even like in the one comments. One of her fans is like, yeah, the her, one, remember I said the yeah, fan? Yes. He was like Z Garney or whatever. He yeah. goes, where was the other three? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start out with, um, well, we're only going to show one. The second one's not worth it. We're yeah. going to show this this to you guys quickly, okay? This is the, the driverless tractor. Yes. Remember, this is China's top innovations over here. A tractor driven by hydrogen fuel cells, and that is autonomous. On June, the China National Agriculture Machinery Equipment Innovation Center launched China's <laughs> oh first 5G plus yeah. hydrogen Gosh. fuel electric tractor in Okay, so now first of all, they say 5G. And it's hydrogen, by the way. Yeah, it's supposed to be a hydrogen cell. Of course, there's no proof of that. Um, it's literally just looks like a normal tractor with a really crappy, like if someone took an Ultraman toy or something, yes, you know what I mean? Yes. Made like a plastic thing and stuck someone it on Someone had friends at the plastic toy factory. Yeah. And they made the shell. They just this. like scaled it up. Yeah, they right? scaled it up badly. Yeah, so let's take a look. The future-like unique unmanned tractor was named ET504H. The tractor is equipped with China Mobile's 5G network. Car now this is, this is the part that's really ridiculous okay so this for those of you who can't see it's this ridiculous looking tractor like if somebody decided to make a kid's toy for like a space tractor yes okay yeah it's too big <laughs> yeah like by the way i'm so yeah. i want to apologize to everyone we were so wrong when we said that china's farming techniques were behind yes because you know apparently they have this so what it is is it's a tractor that can avoid a signpost Yes. Um, okay, I'll revo it's re totally full of lead acid batteries. Yeah, of course, of course it is, <laughs> That's dude. hydrogen. So take a look. They put a signpost <laughs> in the middle of this <laughs> farm field. Okay, so let's... Ugly. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> awful. It gets better, okay? Okay, let's take a look. Future-like, unique, all-man tractor with... So you see that signpost? Yeah. Because, you know, when people put signposts in the middle of a farm land or whatever, it's got to be able to avoid it. Let's watch how... How it maneuvers. Name, it's like well, I'm gonna avoid that. Okay. The tractor great. is equipped with China Mobile's 5G network card inside, which provides smooth movement supported by 5G What does 5G have to do with That's that? my whole point. Okay, so this thing, it's supposed to be an autonomous tractor. So I presume what you do is you say, okay, go and you know, like do this field and go in a straight line and then turn around and come back and then Whatever. So the sensors inside will make it avoid like a signpost. That's got nothing to do with communication. But when you want to send 
which boils down to like logo commands to this thing, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't require 5G technology. Oh. You could send it with like a 2400 board modem. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. We're not talking about high bandwidth stuff. <laughs> no. Giving it like very One basic command. directions. Yeah. Yes, doesn't need bandwidth. No. But apparently, because it's got five China's 5G, because remember, they have to keep pushing 5G. You have to. Yeah. It's got 5G in it, so it helps provide smooth movement. Yeah, that's how... 5G is what controls the movement of this toy tractor. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's somebody with an RC. You know it's there's somebody so, standing there. It's so 100%, RC. yeah. It's so freaking RC. Yeah, yeah. The tractor is based on the Super Tractor 1, released in 2018. Wow. Can you tell me why there's a Decepticon logo from Transformers? That's that's they, a they China thing. Yeah. They can't not. They Dude, tried so hard. You know, you know when uh, I first got to China. Remember, like the, the the everyday kind of trucks that just haul crap, like those really horrible knockoffs of Isuzu the trucks. Yeah, those they're usually like a kind of a rust color, yeah. or they're blue, they're right? Blue, yeah. They used to have like a a sticker of like Optimus Prime or whatever, yes. like a transformer next to the door. And I always wondered why. I in the beginning I thought, oh, yeah. these drivers have got some personality. Yeah, they want to like, hey, hey, I'm driving a truck. I may yeah. as well make it like I'm kind of yeah. like in a transformer. It's no, that. that's from the factory. It's the logo. It's th that transformer picture is yeah. from the factory. Yes, they that's just a, stole it and they just put it on their trucks. Yeah. It's like that's standard equipment. Like welcome, when you buy it. Welcome to state media <laughs> making up a fake. Literally a fake tractor yeah. out of RC car lead acid batteries, yep. remote controlling it with a remote control, yep. not using 5G technology, and putting a freaking Transformers badge on the front. I know, it's got a transform. And okay. This is top Chinese state media. Benefit of the doubt, let's just say that, okay, it is fully autonomous, okay, and you can send commands to it. It's not. Okay, well, let's, just, yeah, let's just, just say benefit. It, it yeah. still looks dumb. <laughs> it's so crappy. Why do you have a, a Decepticon logo on it, okay? Come on, guys. But there's more. Look at that freaking sensor. <laughs> okay? I love that. Can you see the sensor is like stuck on with, I don't know if it's glue or Velcro and the Tape. cable. The yeah, The cable is my favorite yeah, part. Yeah, the, the cable is like coming through the little gap there. Like, can they not mold it into this? No, because it's not real. Yeah. They did this last minute. And they're like, oh, we need this camera so that it can, yeah. like, the sensor so it can avoid stuff yes. or whatever. And so they stick it on yeah, like an at, afterthought. Look at that. It's awful. This is, yeah, it's awful. Okay, this let's see. This is Chabudua. Yes, it really is. This electric driveless super tractor is already in the field. It can be on standby for 24 hours, apparently. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It, actually, I'll rephrase it for it has to be on standby for 24 hours because it, it doesn't move. move. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is the most Chabadua thing I've ever seen. I know. It's ridiculous. Look, they, they can't even make three the same ones. Yeah, look, they, they're all, they all differ because it's like... <laughs> It's like slave labor. They're in like, like, we a gotta put North these into, Korean factory. Look at the wheels aren't the same. Oh it's my supposed God. to be like this is a fleet of these things, but they're all different because they're all just thrown together. They don't even have the same wheels. You know, this is obviously one of those things where they um, um, put the stuff together. Yes. And they get funding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's it. They're like, look, what we have working was, prototypes. The central government is so disconnected and so lost. Mm -hmm. They said, here's a million dollars yeah. to go to this thing because there's nepotism, right? Yeah. Someone's uncle's friend's cousin had guanxi like connections with like a local area. And they're like, we can make this. And yes. they got all the funding. They blew it all on cognac and yeah. cigarettes and baijo and hookers. Yeah. And then they said, shit. We have to put this out in a week. They went out and forced people to make the worst crap and cobble together some garbage. All, all they did was buy some existing tractors or whatever they are, like cut the cab off, you know, and then put these things on this like crap plastic body on top of it. Hold on. You know that story I just told about how these, yeah. these were created, This that made up story? Yeah. If, I, if the people involved in this project heard me say that, they'd be going like this. Yeah, they'd be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. Exactly. How did he know? Because yeah. that's what happened. Yeah, absolutely. So what I like the most about this, which is... <laughs> what is it's, that? It's, it's what just that? a freaking tractor with a bloody shell on it okay. it makes me think that they did this in reaction to us because we always talked about how poor, the poor chinese people are still using oxen stuff and they're yeah. trying to 
portray the government's trying to portray itself as richer than America or yes, something. Yeah. And the people are using oxen it, toiling through the there's dirt. There's probably even a dude sitting under there, you know, like driving it. <laughs> no, he's looking through small, a little slot. It's too small. He's like in there. I think that tractor is smaller than we think. Think so? Yeah. I also want to point out how wonderful the countryside looks there. Yes. Can you see the the beautiful sky? Oh, that's pure smog, and that's what a lot of China looks like most of the, the most of the time. Yeah, it's it can be very depressing. Yeah. Um, <sighs> this Look at this that. CG rendition. You know it's not hydrogen. No. I mean that's the most grotesque over over yeah, exaggeration. There's, again, there's no proof. Once again. This is something I found specifically when I was doing all this um, the research into China's space program. It's alarming. It's, the majority of what they've done in space real. is CG. Yeah. They only have CG footage. But you'd think with a billions of dollars being thrown at a program like that, it would be meticulously filmed. Yeah, because I mean, for propaganda. America and uh, the Soviets yep. managed to film their missions like to the everything. moon and stuff with cameras yeah. in, in the, the 60s. 60s. But China, for some reason, cannot no. film their rockets once no. they, they show them taken off. Yeah. But then when they're in space, it's all footage. CG renditions. Yeah. There's no, like, you can't see the second stage is falling off. None of that. They do it all in CG. So, you know, it's Makes a bit sus. Makes me a little sus. Yeah, it's, it's sus. It's sus. sus. Um, anyway, apparently, like... <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. A satellite sends a signal to a book. You know, the way that it's portrayed as well in state media is that everyone in China is now using these tractors. But yeah, and it's also like, look at this incredible technology that Ch China has yes. invented. Yes. You will never see one of these. This doesn't yeah. exist. It's not no. real. Even this fake one is not real. And it's not running on hydrogen. No. And okay. it's not 5G. No, it's just... <laughs> it's got a sensor taped to the front. Yeah. Now, my favorite part is now they're showing it in action, but yeah. notice how they had to speed the footage up. Yes. Okay? Yes. See, it's like... Look, it's like... It, all it needed to do is avoid this man, and they had to speed the footage right. up. You're right. A person could fit in there. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. They had to speed the footage up because it's so slow. Because <laughs> it's probably a very weak electric motor powering this huge no, behemoth. And if it even if it is, it could just be a regular motor. You never know. Oh, you mean an engine? Yes. No, they have so many cheap electric motors. Yeah, I'm sure, electric. but maybe they just bought a normal tractor, like I said. <laughs> okay, it's not that hard. It's not. There's no sound in these uh, videos. They've I, taken the you'd sound see out. The diesel smoke. Though. No, dude. Like the, <laughs> they could just be, could be capturing it in like a bag under there. You could never be. know. I'm, I'm going. But on, it's probably electric. I'm saying it's an e-bike motor. Yeah, whatever it is. You want to show that this thing is good at avoiding obstacles. So what do they do? They put a like uh, the caution wet sign on the floor there. I'll get us out of here so you can actually see it. Okay, you can now see the um, uh, right there that sign, and what then it's like is that? it's like whoop, super fast because they sped up the footage because it's going at like three miles, maybe, three miles a month maybe, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I had to speed it up to avoid that man. Yeah, you don't need. To yeah, show we don't that. need to show that. But the the whole point is, it's like. It's this fake it till you make it crap. Yeah. Look. It's just not real. And somebody might watch this and say, wow, China has yeah. autonomous hydrogen powered tractors. Or, or read about it. Yeah. Right? So you don't know. Yeah. You're like, oh, wow. What do what we, I always see tankies do this. They're like, America, it's like uh, America and it's some backwards thing, right? Like a, like a road and no high speed rail. And it's like me to while in China. And they so, show stuff yeah. like this and you're like, you guys really have to understand. It's remember when they made a big thing about making a trackless train? And it was a bus. It's just a bus. <laughs> remember the comments like, oh, mother, yeah, the mother, mother effort, that's, that's a just bus. a bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were making a huge thing on the shills and everyone were jumping on it yeah, too. They were like, retweeting it. look, look, China's brand new, amazing technology, Meanwhile, a trackless America. train. Yeah. It, but yeah, it's just it's a like, bus. That's a tumbleweed. And then it's like, dude, that's a bus. Yeah, it's just a bus. Yeah. It's a bus. Anyway, so again, we just had to point out as this is worldview, but we're not done with worldview, okay? We don't need to talk about this this um, this um nonsense uh, radio dish or whatever. No. But we're still sticking on Miss Wow here because while I was um, yeah, doing, this is your doing research on the, the, the hey space guys. stuff, she does a... <laughs> She does a lot of the propaganda for space, right? Because she's supposed to be the tech, CGTN yeah. tech correspondent or whatever, right? So um, let's take a look at what she's doing now. Let's listen to this. It's here. This is my new buddy, AR Tagnas. Okay, just quickly for everyone, a Tycho Nord, because 
A taikonaut is China's English word for their astronauts. Why can't they just call it an astronaut? They want to be different. Right? Astro isn't a, a nationality. No, but I mean, you do get cosmonauts. As yeah, there. fair enough. So fair they wanted their own thing, okay? Because right, taik- taikong is Yeah, is taikong space. is space. And like I said, nought is what they've you know, contributed. contributed to space <laughs> technology. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's just uh, continue, all right? So here's the AR taikonaut, as she calls it. And Tac- Why do we say taikonaut? Because it's taikonaut, It's right? hard to say taikonaut, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. So this is the AR Taknot. Can we can we just call it a <laughs> taknot? Taknot. Okay. It's made of like it's tacky. It's tacky, right? Yeah, okay. it, it, this is really tacky. It's a taknot. So now look at this. Okay, let's let's watch this. Two of the crew members will stay in China's space station for six months. Wow, I'm so excited. How about you? Me too. It's awesome. <laughs> six months is a long time. They must feel homesick. Let's send them greetings the from Earth. Yep. Got it. Hi, Shenzhou 13 crew members. I'm Miss Wow. Well. I'm a tech vlogger. Say hi to you from Chongqing in China. So this is like a dual a dual purpose propaganda because yes. it's all about Chongqing. Chongqing is Dude. the forefront of state propaganda right yes. now. There's like a really sinister company yeah. that they set up to be yeah. not government affiliated and it's literally straight up government and it's bad. Yeah, it it's is. Scary. It's government and uh, they co-opt a lot of foreigners to do yeah. stuff. But so this, okay, it doesn't end there. Okay, we'll, we'll skip out. You don't need to care about the freaking hot pot and no. all that. Okay, so wait, what's this? Oh, right. Let's see. Probably a hot pot lover. Yummy. I hate the fact that that stupid thing is doing the floss dance. I hate that and the fact that the meat on the plate is upright. Yeah. Why does? Why is it upright? They have to always have like a little gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they used to do the put a Barbie doll with the meat on it, yeah, like yeah. a Lady Gaga dress or whatever. Yeah. It's always some kind of thing. Yeah. I'm gonna try some. You guys, I'm a superheroes. Hold on, I love the dub. The, so so the AI, or what is it called? AR, right? Yeah, AR Technot. The Technot is standing there doing the floss. Yeah. And it's looping. Yeah, it's looping and it's doing like this. And but it's, it's like, yeah, the floss. it's cutting, it's looping badly. Yeah. And then it's it's dubbed and it's not an AR voice. It's just a dude. Yeah. In, it's like, that's in awesome. He definitely recorded on a cell phone. That's yeah. a cell phone mic for right, sure. Right, right. Anyway, so now I love the fact that you can download the CGTN app now and let's make a video together. Send your locations and what you want to say to the Chinese technos. And the sh- technos. Send us your location. Download the app. <laughs> send us your location. That's what she said. Send, send us your GPS coordinates. Yeah, we location, want to know exactly where you are. To and if you your... say one thing bad, we're yes. sending people after you. Send the technos. Yeah, you. exactly. Go to your settings. Go to general. Click privacy. Allow all private <laughs> privacy <laughs> notifications. Okay, but Share okay, it doesn't end there because. Let's do this, my dear followers. Let's pass on this best way. I mean, it's it's all nice and good. So she's made sure. this little message. Okay. Join us. Love, Love you. you. Hey guys. And then, okay, let's uh, just see if there's any similarities here in this next one that she did. They love this train going through the building oh, thing in Chongqing. It's like the one thing, thing all the shills will talk about it too. Yeah. You know what that's called? What? Bad planning. It's bad, really bad. Planning. There's no reason for no. you to have to put a train through a no. building unless you just don't know what you're doing. They did that in Japan or whatever, but it's just because they ran out of space. Yep. They did that here to make, to copy that. Oh, of course. Yeah. Let's see. Miss Wang here. Welcome back to my channel. This is my new buddy, AR Technot. And say hi to everybody. Cut. Have you heard the news? The Shenzhou 13 crew members will stay in China's space station for six months. Wow, so excited. How about you? Me too. It's awesome. But six months is a long time. They must be like <laughs> Let's send them greetings from Earth. Got it. Hi, Shenzhou 13 crew members. I'm Miss Wow. I'm a... Why is it the exact same <laughs> video? They could even do another take because it's a guy. It's yeah. not like it's hard to get him to record another thing. But she says exactly the same stuff. He's yes. the, the AR Technot says exactly the same stuff. Freaking Technot. It's dude. just a copy of the other video, but in a different setting. And it's yes. the same thing about, hi, look, brother. it's Chongqing. Say hi to you yes. from Chongqing in China. They and really they try show to slide some, all the propaganda. They try to show like Chongqing's rail networks yeah, and crap, crap and all yeah. that nonsense. See, look, exactly the exactly the same. We'll yeah. even end it. Let's, okay, do their whole bloody train through a building thing. Superstars. That's what she did in the last one. See, download the CGTM. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Let's do this, my dear followers. Your dear followers, your 1.3 million followers that none of them exist. Oh, exactly. 
Love you. It's it's the exact same thing. That's what I'm trying to say yeah, here. Is yeah. that they could not even change the no, script. No, it's emo. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. Anyway, so we just thought we'd throw that in there because I found it quite hilarious. I got some incredibly funny stuff about space. Yeah. In my video, which will probably be released next week, because I I want to do it right. There's quite a few things I want to add which I haven't added yet. So sure. It's gonna be. Fun. I want to say to the poor tech knot, he's trapped in there. He's trapped in that little AR helmet. Yeah. He just wants to get out. Yeah. He wants some of that hot pot. They yeah. didn't feed him. Nope. Poor little poor dance. little tech knot. Dance tech, tech knot. knot. Dance. dance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, it's time for us to hit uh, Yamcha, which is our Q&A section. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to have a chat, yes. get to loosen the tie. For those of you who don't know, by the way, um, the, this, this whole section of the show gets cut out on Monday. So you can watch it now if you're watching live or you can watch it on the weekend. But Monday, you won't be able to watch it unless you're a patron. Mm -hmm. Every level of patron gets to see yeah. the uncut show. So I'm going right. to loosen the tie. And for those of you who are watching this next week sometime, thank you for joining mm -hmm. us and stay awesome.